scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Bless the name of the Lord. I live a life that is intentionally conscious of the changes that God is bringing in my life. I pay attention to my dealings with the Spirit of God and I recognize and acknowledge the transitions that are happening to me. Listen, not only is it important for you to come to church, come before the presence of God, it's important that you trace your growth. This is very, very important because it has both a spiritual and a psychological effect upon you. When you can see that I am growing. See, no human being spends his time doing what he knows will not work. Are we together now? So if you must receive a renewed um, passion to fire on with the things of God, you must be able to take an inventory, an appraiser. My pursuit of God so far, what has it delivered to my life? Can I, can I claim that I've been able to experience certain dimensions of the power of God? When the lady gave her testimony about, you know, supernatural answers coming, uh, I wasn't just impressed with the testimony. I was shocked at the unbelief of some of you. That's what surprised me. That something as spiritually basic as a visionary encounter. And then so many people want to take the power of God. Then you want to give word of knowledge. If a shadow appears and you see answers and you are wondering, is it exactly true or is it a dream? How in the world is God going to begin to reveal to you things that have not yet happened? Will you believe it is God? If you cannot believe this, that means you don't even believe that the miracles that happen here are real. Are we together? In my life, Lord, I see what you're doing one more time. I truly lift my hands in prayer of your name I lift my hands in praise of your name let's just sing it one more time I praise you I praise you mean this song from the depth of your heart oh Lord I praise you for your authority for your grace upon our lives in my life I see what you're doing one more time of your name Hallelujah. We'll get to the word, but let me just speak to one or two people. Silas, 
I'm hearing the name Silas. Who is Silas? Silas. The Lord is speaking to me about someone called Silas. The Lord wants to bring a miracle for the family of one Silas. Please, if you're here inside, outside, just notify so I will speak to you. I'm hearing a name Joyce. Is it Joyce or something? Joyce, like J O Y C E. Is there someone with that name? Joyce. Joyce. Please, if that belongs to you, very quickly, so that I can just speak the word that the Lord is putting. Hallelujah. I'm hearing a lady, they call you Gimbia, whatever that means. They call you Gimbia. Gimbia, who is that? Inside, outside. Please, very quickly, if there's someone like that with that case or someone related to you, let me just speak over your life. about them. Please don't just come out. Let's save time. We have a lot. They call you that name. Who has a sick patient in the hospital? I'm seeing somebody having a sick patient. You came here. You left a sick patient in the hospital. This is a very serious case. This is I'm seeing the person just bones. Um, this is like a lady a lady why is he out you're the one with a sick person where what's wrong person I'm seeing is a blood disease. I'll pray for you, but this is a blood disease, something that's eating the person, is lying down. In fact, they are praying technically just for the person to die. It's very quickly, let's just minister to them. This is what the meetings are all about. It's an opportunity for God to step in and bless people. You know, only the church is authorized to do this. Any other person who does this is illegal. Only the church if a herbalist does this, it's still illegal. The politician does this, it's illegal. Only the church is authorized. There are not many places that are permitted by God to do these kinds of things. So we must take advantage of it. What's wrong? Patient, where? What's wrong with you? and his mouth and his legs has swelled up. They told you something. A man of God told the family something. What did he say? That somebody charmed him from the village. Do you think it's a lie? Is he your brother? Your friend? What do you mean friend? Somebody you want to marry, you are now saying he's your friend as if. Am I lying? No, sir. Shebi is your guy now. Like, <laughs> hallelujah let's look listen listen let's take this in easy this night i have some serious it's too early to start laughing the message tonight is very serious hallelujah you believe god can heal him right you're a very nice lady hold my hands may god how many ladies meet somebody that they like and the person is in the hospital, they will just leave him first and start arranging for the absence. So for her to be able to come out and stand in for him. You believe God will heal him? What's his name? Father, please do a miracle for this gentleman. I use you as a point of contact. 
May the anointing of the Spirit touch him. And that chain of witchcraft be broken. Anything he eats, he vomits it out. We have to pray in the name of Jesus Christ. I use you as a point of contact. Let there be a miracle. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen and amen. God bless you, my dear. God is bringing a breakthrough for your family, right? Tonight is not a miracle service, but let me just minister your joys. God is bringing a miracle to your family. And um, I'm seeing you walking, but then I'm seeing like a vehicle just takes you to rush. That speed God is bringing to your life. Father, I pray that this will be even as you have declared in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I really don't know why. Okay, come. The person with accident, his leg broke. What happened? He, she. Okay. Do you know why? What did they say is wrong with her? My dear, me, I'm, I, was I there? Her leg broke. That's why they said she would stay in the hospital for three months, 90 Three months. This is what I'm telling you. You are saying, trailer fell. will trailer fall on you and it will not enjoy you? This is a miracle she needs because they are going to, there are multiple fractures that happen to her. Father, do a miracle and let her get out of that hospital in the name of Jesus. And for you, may the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Why is he out? Your name is Joyce. Your ah okay. Let me just pray. Honestly, let's let's just pray for her. At least you don't come out and get nothing. Father, bless Joyce in the name of Jesus. Sir, you are suffering financially, very seriously. You are suffering financially, one. But the second thing is not something I can say here because it will embarrass you. But please, you love Jesus. Talk, please, it's not something I'll say here, but it must stop in Jesus' name. You know what I'm saying? It must stop. I don't want to embarrass you, sir. But please, if I make the altar call, just come out and go into it. God bless you, sir. Thank you. I'll pray for you. I'll just lay my hands quickly so we can do tonight's teaching. Gimbia. Who is from Kaduna? What's your name? So, why are you here? The Lord wants to bring deliverance to a family. Please, just, just let me just do this. I didn't intend doing this. I'm seeing a family, four of them in the family are SS. Four of them. SS. Four of them. The person is somewhere, I don't know if he's inside or outside. Four of them. SS, like genotype. Genotype. And the Lord wants to do a miracle right now. Please, don't sit back there. God wants to do a miracle. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. A miracle for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, a miracle God is bringing restoration to you. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you. Please go back. Are you brothers? Where are the other ones? They are not here. Four of you. How many of you are SS? Four. You believe God will do a miracle? Do you believe it? The anointing of the Spirit of God is already on you because you have faith to receive. The power of God is already in you. Breaking. Something is leaving you. You must let her go. I tell you, there's, there's no such thing as SS. Believe me. It's a lie. See? That a doctor said it. I'm not against doctors. They are practicing. They are practicing. Practicing. When we say you are practicing, what does that mean? That means you don't have all the answers. They are practicing. There's no such thing as SS. If you are not whole, there is a spirit making it so. If you sit down just saying, I'm okay. No. Machine called this SS. You are watching it right before you. This is witchcraft. There's no such thing. I don't believe it. We have doctors, see doctors all around, but I don't believe it. Just believe me. You must, you don't fight people, but you must contend for a higher spiritual reality. 
that's the only way you can dominate the limitations of this realm i say it again there is no such thing as ss and i minister right now i stretch my hands anyone here with any blood disease please pay attention to what i'm saying anyone here under the sound of my voice with any blood disease whether you are aware or not right now in the name of jesus i arrest that spirit wherever it is i'm not asking you to come out wherever you are in the name that is above all names i arrest that spirit wherever it is there are at least three people with this blood disease it's like a curse in your family wherever they are oh god in the name of jesus christ i arrest that spirit we call it in medicine ss or as or whatever it is but we are changing it right now we are changing it right now by the influence of the spirit of god inside and outside anyone who is a victim of that kind of thing let it be changed right now father hold my hands i bring you healing in the name of jesus right now by the power of the holy spirit be healed of that demonic thing in the name of jesus i use both of you as a point of contact to your families hallelujah goodness i have to preach bring the lady that shouts under the anointing outside i'm seeing an angel of the lord touching a lady outside a mighty shout please bring her inside right now i want to talk to her break every chain break every chain break every Lord has been doing a great work in your life but one of the things that the Lord is doing in this season is he's cutting away altars this is what is happening in your life and in your family he's breaking them up your coming to koinonia is causing a serious catastrophe in the gates of hell concerning your family and I pray for you God will begin to give you dreams all kinds of strange dreams encounters with angels supernatural encounters encounters in the spirit i agree with you and i take authority over everything that does not name the name of christ let it live your life and let it go forever in the name of jesus listen let me tell you something whether a service is a miracle service or not it doesn't matter as far as god is concerned for as long as there is something in your life that stops you from enjoying the blessings of the kingdom it must come under attack are we together now we can't say wait until i know that i have a teaching session but you see let me tell you something it is our desire that every time you come here you have an encounter with god hallelujah I'm seeing like a bird jumping out of people. This is strange. Just allow me to do my madness for a few minutes. This is like a spirit leaving people from their stomach, just flying out. I'm seeing at least five people that this is happening to. Severely, right now, at least five people. Five people that this is happening to. Five people. Something just jumping out like a bird. That's what I'm seeing in the spirit. Let it go. Let it go. In the name that is above all names, let it go right now. Like a bird is living. 
causing pain and destruction I command it to leave right now in the name of Jesus Christ for one that's what has been causing an infection I see like an infection but it goes right now by the power of the Holy Spirit it must leave your body forever Hallelujah. Please sit down. Let's get to the business of the night. This atmosphere is already stirred. Hallelujah. Revelation chapter 1. Last week, we began looking at the subject of the unity of the faith. We began to explore the body of Christ, the ecclesia. And we started to examine why we've not been able to attain that position of unity. In the body of Christ why divisions why seditions and all kinds of things and um, the Lord granted us the opportunity to look extensively I first and foremost began last week by talking about the concept of divine patterns how that no man is at liberty to choose the method of his pursuit towards spiritual progress there's no such thing as guessing your way around. There is a blueprint. Are we together now? And then it's expected that everyone who aligns to God will follow his predefined blueprint. That means there is a way to seek God such that you will find him. There is a way to become a Christian and to live out your Christian experience such that it becomes fruitful anything outside that pathway will lead to error will lead to apostasy and will lead to a barren christian life and we began to examine the concept of divine patterns there is a way you build ministry you don't build it the way you want there is a pattern there is a way you build business you don't build it the way you want there is a way you build family so the first assignment of every believer who wants to make progress in the spirit is not just to begin to move carelessly but through the illumination of the word of god to search out right the pathways in the spirit that have been earmarked for the delivery of certain kinds of spiritual results if you want the anointing in the spirit there is a pathway that leads to the anointing if you want increase in ministry there is a pathway if you want to walk in financial prosperity there is a pathway the problem with our generation is that we have we are so intellectual and scientific we guess our way around the things that only the word of god can give us information about jesus said i am the way not a way hallelujah the bible says there is a way that seemeth right unto a man scientifically intellectually it says but the end thereof are the ways of death so one of the things that staying under the presence of God does for a Christian is that it helps you to cut away all these options you have and guides you to the path, that path of righteousness, right? Where you begin to live out in accordance. You are no longer a rebel to the principles of the kingdom. Then you come at peace with creation and everything begins to... Um, compel on common consistent results in your life praise the lord so we spoke about divine patterns and um we rounded off last week discussing three great errors remember three great errors that have crippled the body of christ and um, has fought god's agenda of seeing the church coming to that point the bible calls the unity of faith Error number one is apostasy, a deviation from the patterns of God, a deviation from the truth. And I told you that there are two dimensions of apostasy. The vessel communicating that apostasy, that deviation, that error 
can be false and of the devil never of god in the first place or the individual can be of god but his doctrine is not of god are we together now the bible talked about a man in the bible called demas demas was once in the faith but he fell out of the faith and began to communicate things that were not of god balaam the bible warns in the book of revelation of the doctrine of balaam balaam was a true prophet right but then there was a progression it was first an error of balaam then it was a way of balaam then it was a doctrine of balaam it started as a mistake then it became a pathway to guide others to follow and then it became a doctrine the bible talks about the doctrine of the nicolaitans which i hate all of these are fabrications from the pit of hell many of them uh they were initiated by sincere people with sincere desires but because they guess their own pathway see the danger when sincerity mixes with error it becomes apostasy because you have passion but your pathway is wrong are we together so someone wants to see breakthrough in their family sincere heart then they go to a herbalist a wrong pathway and then it produces a deviation from god's pattern with severe consequences so the first error is the error of apostasy there are many doctrines being taught in church many of them have been older than every one of us here but the foundation of those doctrines are from the pit of hell the bible says doctrines of demons doctrines of demons people have gone for prayer and fasting gone to several places and not navigating the pathway of the spirit properly they have access strange ideas from spirits that a thing is supernatural does not mean is of god supernatural just means outside of the three-dimensional realm there are spheres that influence us beyond the scope of the three-dimensional realm and chances are that anything you see that is superhuman you suddenly call it godly it may be divine in that it is of a force that is greater than that of humans is supernatural being that is outside of the scope of man's reason but that does not mean it is of god the apostle said there is as it were many voices and none of them is without effect so that you are having encounters that are extra physical or beyond the physical realm does not mean these encounters are of god apostasy number two indifference that was the second error we considered how that there are people in the body of christ whose scope of passion is not kingdom the scope of their passion is not um is not holistic once an error in the body of christ does not affect their immediate environment they are not concerned are we together now is 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 the error of indifference so they are so conscious of their ego they do not have the courage to confront certain things that have the capacity to destroy the body for as long as it has not affected them in person they are the kinds who will give an a, a testimony like praise the lord i was coming in a car with 30 people and there was an accident but only because i hold papa's biro every other person died only me the god of a and b and c and people clap about it not minding that other believers died which has impeded the capacity for kingdom acceleration so the the scope of their pursuit of god is biased self-centered once a thing does not affect them directly that was the attitude of esther when she got to the throne as against that of mordecai mordecai was a gatekeeper with a passion for the salvation of israel are we together now and god took esther hadassah to the throne the purpose was so that she would be a source of influence to rebuke that which haman was plotting against the nation of israel but when she got there she became carried away by the bounties of royalty and then Haman was there plotting the destruction of the nation of Israel. And Mordecai sent her a message. And for a while, she would not pay attention. And this is what Mordecai said. Don't you think? Number one, they don't even know you are a Jew. 
hanging in that palace because when they know they will hang you and kill you in a shameful way a woman gave chance for you to come here called Vashti and now God brought you there and you have lost that kingdom view of your purpose of being in the palace so because you are now enjoying the royalties of the palace you do not care if your people die listen if you want to become an effective Christian an effective minister your scope must expand beyond the horizon of your ministry and koinonia to think kingdom you must sustain an ability to receive the burden of the corporate church and not just your individual sphere now for the purpose of organization and loyalty you'll be loyal to whatever god has committed the ministry whatever it is he has given you however your concern must transcend your personal comfort into seeing that the body of christ is making progress no matter how koinonia is advancing as a ministry if the body of christ in zaria if the body of christ in the north is not making progress if the body of christ in nigeria is not making progress we are not making the kind of kingdom impact god desires are we together as a ministry we may be doing well this is the reason why we travel from region to region spending our lives stretching ourselves we're doing well as a ministry but how about the body of christ that they too may know him so we go to other regions and inconvenience ourselves to make sure that we open them up to the perspectives of god that has been communicated to us and contribute our quota to strengthening the body of christ within that territory hallelujah are we together now and this is one of the 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 proofs of a true apostolic ministry the scope of the impact of an apostolic ministry is beyond the platform that is committed to them they they oversee the spiritual progress of a territory not just a ministry hallelujah so if there is a spirit that the devil is bringing over our territory to cause the church to be lukewarm or to begin to cause a particular trait and a manifestation of darkness it is the role of the apostolic and the prophetic ministry to see beyond even if it has not affected koinonia yet we see it and stay it far off and keep the environment conducive for the advancement of the kingdom to take place indifference there are so many people who will never come out you ask them um, what is your position on tithing for instance and um, because they are in the presence of somebody who does not believe in tithing they will not want to spoil that relationship by saying tithing is of God. But then they, they have their convictions. But to be outspoken about the truth, they do not want it. Because they are afraid of losing members. Are we together? They are afraid of losing all kinds of things. A man comes to sow one billion into your ministry and you know it's drug money. But then because you need the money... You would compromise on that chance to show how addicted you are to the precepts of the kingdom are we together now and you collect the drug money and not have the courage to confront him and say no 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 we need money in this ministry but this is we are not this desperate it must be according to the patterns of god and then the last error that has destroyed the body of christ is exaggerated confrontation of apostasy you see the balance now so the first error is apostasy a deviation from the truth the second error is indifference we don't know where you are standing neither here nor there men with no convictions they are not outspoken about anything they are confident about and then number three are those who are cynical and they hate the body of christ they have contributed to causing more pain in the body than victory exaggerated confrontation they are already people who are sadist. They have a negative perception about the body. Are we together now? And so anything that happens in the body, they interpret it from the lens of jealousy and envy. So even when they are communicating what is supposed to be true, the foundation upon which that communication is predicated upon is wrong. Self-centered and biased. 
So for instance, if they are trying to say something like, um, we caught Maman with a charm. As a man of God, we caught him in the meeting. I saw him rubbing one powder quickly. They take on that case study because they have a bias for the supernatural by default. Are we together now? It's just that they do not have enough fact and figures to convince people to leave the supernatural. So when they lay hold on something, they capitalize on that one exceptional case and it becomes the foundation of their proposing what is supposed to be a corrective measure but it's a communication of error are we together someone can watch what just happened here now this manifestation of the anointing and be uncomfortable with it are we together now and then go to a church where he sees a man of god holding somebody's head and turning the head around and use that singular case to mean anytime you are ministering to people under the anointing is an error no sir you see true correction must come from a standpoint of love anything outside of the scope of love is jealousy is bitter envy are we together so those who help in deviating the body of christ from the precepts of god those who are indifferent about it because of their self-centeredness and then those who in a bid to supposedly bring correction let me tell you something please look up i say this with every sense of humility not every man of god is authorized to correct the body of christ read your bible you don't just stand up and think because you have something to say there is there is a throne there is an authorization like a spiritual pass that is given unto people by election of grace that authorizes them to be able to define the boundaries of the spiritual operation of the body of Christ. It's not just because you have a mic and you have people listening to you, you come and stand with all kinds of misguided perspectives and now begin to communicate truths that are limited by your own spiritual perception. hallelujah so let's take it from there and um we'll touch on a few things and pray hallelujah revelation chapter one amen and amen and amen are you blessed verse 12 we'll read from 12 to 15 revelation chapter 1 12 to 15 there are a few thoughts maybe about four of them i will share with you on the body of christ and then we will pray okay and i turned to see the voice this is john the beloved when he was caught in the isle of patmos and i turned to see the voice that spake with me and being turned i saw what seven golden candlesticks or lampstands next verse and in the midst of the seven candlesticks one like unto the son of man clothed with a garment down to the foot and gird about the paths with a golden girdle let's just stop there really the remaining is just a description listen where was the son of man found in the midst of the seven lampstands and those seven lampstands john himself interpreted it that the seven lampstands represent the catholic church not roman catholic the word catholic means the universal church the ecclesia are we together now god's body the very body of christ this is a powerful revelation because regardless please listen regardless of the error and the confusion and now i know that there's a lot of that regardless of the scandals that break out here and there in church among men of god regardless of the divinations and the mix of witchcraft and the prophetic god is still in the church when you want to find where god is on earth the bible says he was found in the midst of the seven candlesticks you will never come to a point where you will not find god in the church this is a revelation that will help you to tread spiritual pathways listen in every assembly i don't care whether the man is a herbalist or a devil if there is one person who genuinely believes in the hand of God for the sake of that one person God will find a way of manifesting himself 
in the church whether or not he is received are we together now please listen do not carry this idea that god is is just in some places and not in some places no the bible says in the midst of the seven lampstands are we together you must have this understanding about the body of christ so that when you go for a conference and you watch the people playing games and the people trying to get money out of people as angry as you are there is a consolation he is still in the midst of the seven lampstands so you take your eyes away from all the error and the jamborees and you pay attention if you pay attention you will find god this is already a deliverance for someone because if you are looking for a perfect church you will not find one you will find a man of god who is warded but lousy while you are angry with that one you find the one that loves god but once in a while he touches beer when there's pressure are we together and then while you are running you find another one brothers and sisters in the midst of the confusion of the church christ is still in the church so you have your your predefined you have your idea about how service should be run koinonia is quite organized if during praise and worship you decide to just fly over here the protocol will carry you and take you out we are a bit organized but there's a church you go to that somebody can even be dancing and come and jump and the man of god will hold him and jump back and you now roll and enjoy you will go to that kind of church with your cynicism because you want everywhere to be like koinonia and then you do not have the flexibility to understand that god is not in the church because it is perfect god is in the church because he is the one perfecting it believe this and you will have a very very open spirit about the body of christ there is no way i cannot preach there is no way i can if tell me um call well i i don't mention names of men of god but please permit me to just call one call uh, Gurma, that guy lagos about an expert Gurma Raji, right if Gurma Raji invites me for dinner i will go i won't do it in a secret i will do it in the open you will snap me and it will be on facebook I will go and eat with you the person who caught the meat you bought from the market today is doing worse things than Guru Maharaj what they did with that cow before you ate it but just because you didn't see it you now bought the meat you didn't pray over it you boiled the thing and ate it well, you see this hypocrisy and lies in the church is why we don't find God listen there is no man who is influenced outside of his will being in the presence of evil is not what corrupts people opening up to the influence of evil is what corrupts a man this is not a justification to be unruly with your spirit but you must be conscious of what is within you above and beyond what is around you let me tell you Christ is in his body don't think one man's anger about what the church is doing so the, the argument that oh there are people who wear trousers and god is not in this church there are people who veil their hairs and don't believe in wearing trousers they are people of the law god is not in this church these ones are grace people god is there these ones are law people god these ones are old testament christ is everywhere trust me trust me i've gone to too many places and i have wondered and marveled at the presence of god that came there so when i go for a meeting I expect imperfection from the vessels so it doesn't surprise me are we together now I went for a meeting one day and the man of God was preaching and they were clapping and he was carried away and he did something that Kai a Christian should not do you know we men of God once you are carried away especially when you joke and people clap it now you, you now digress and start saying things that don't make sense and he did something that was not nice I said well god this is your church you are still in your holy temple we fear you but just have mercy on us and my ears was open and i was blessed i was blessed so if you go and sit down in a church where they say everybody fetch sand for instance it was, ah, what am i doing here no let me tell you you can ignore the sand part and pay attention even if you don't learn any spiritual lesson you can learn diligence even if you don't learn anything you can learn excellence 
if the message is not blessing you at all look at the backdrop all right this is a new color i've not said there's something to learn because whatever it is christ is in his church listen to what i'm telling you and you will be so mature you will marvel and wonder at your level of spiritual maturity god's idea is not to make the whole world koinonia that's that's a dream if that's what you think we're doing well i'm not one of those men of god who believes that will convert the whole world to become our church it's a dream that god will stop by himself because that's not his idea i think kingdom so regardless of my personal contribution i am also um of the proposition that the church as a universal entity will make progress even if it is not my unique so if somebody is healed whether the person was healed from mfm or living faith it doesn't matter the most important thing is an avenue has been created for the power of god to find expression are we together now god is still in the midst of his church please listen brothers and sisters god does not use us because we are perfect people no self-perfection is, is exhausting and unnecessary Number two, <clears throat> Matthew chapter 16, verse 8. There are certain things that I want to straighten out tonight about the body of Christ so that our approach over the body of Christ will be very balanced because many men of God do not have the courage to teach this because of their bias they run churches like their personal organization matthew 16 verse 18 is the second point that i want to communicate it says and i say unto thee listen thou art peter and upon this rock i will build my church everybody say god will build his church so who is the builder of the church god never left the building of the church to joshua selman or any other person he himself is the builder of the church imagine if god left the building of the church to me i will first gather all the people who are my tribe is that not what we do are you my tribe no you are not part of this building and we make it look like association of christian members of of northern i will build my church and if you allow me build it the gate of hell that means if the gate of hell is prevailing over your church you are building it because god said i will build it in such a way that it will be so fortified that the gates of hell will not prevail please listen i want you once and for all especially for those who are pastors or those who are trusting god for ministry bury this ownership mentality about ministry this is why pastors fight do you fight what is not your own if i want to touch a jimmy's child now is his child are we together now and so he will stand and defend it if i'm touching this flower you may feel bad but it's not your own personally so you have no right to challenge me the decorations department can be angry but at least not you so why do i become so personal if somebody says i don't like koinonia you take it personal because you are the geo you are the builder you will, you will pay for the bills you will manage all the crises there and you will run yourself to an early grave i learned this early in life god if you don't build your church let's be embarrassed together i am just a pipe the way you see let me tell you this is the reason why there is so much refusal to confront truth in the body of christ even when the truth has been known because everybody is conscious of his own church so we run we run ministries like business ventures i have two thousand members in my ministry and my church these are my sons these are my daughters they are everybody's at my beck and call and then you now try to spiritualize it by saying god is helping us ownership mentality as a leader you should be responsible over that which god has given to you but you see we are stewards in the kingdom if men of god knew that they are stewards they would not kill themselves 
I see the way a lot of pastors, yeah, I mean, you see somebody, he didn't come to church, you almost kill him. I didn't see you in church. Why? To mean you reduce the number. It's because of you, they, they, they thought we are, they, they have been writing that we are 50. Now you are the one who is making them think we are 48. You see, that kind of mindset. Listen, listen, I'm speaking to you. If you don't relinquish the, the pressure that ownership brings, it will kill you early. That's why people fight. Hallelujah. That's why people fight. If you ever want to see expansion in anything and in ministry, you must surrender everything to God. You see the way we do koinonia? The, the workers are aware. God forbid, but if I die today, you only cry for seven days. Today is what? Friday. I assure you, by Tuesday or Wednesday, you'll be used to it. Ah, Posu is dead. I'm dead. How, I mean, what happened? This guy even released long life. What, what you are saying is irrelevant because I'm gone. They will bury me, take me. My mother will cry. All the people, they will cry and everybody will be fine. When they dump me, that's all. I tell you, and by next week, Koinonia continues. The only thing you will miss in this ministry is my unique grace. I preach enough messages to bless the body of Christ. But there are pastors, the day they miss service, everybody will know this service was a mess. Where are you, Abba, pastor? Where are you? Listen, never have that kind of attitude over the body of Christ. The best of any member is only an effective member. No one person equals the church. The, the, the recognition of this is equal to wisdom. Are we together? I learned this early. And so I let him take the glory. He's the one building Koinonia. And for as long as I allow him to keep building it. That's the reason why we do ministry pressure free. There's no frowning at everybody. Frowning at the offering. Once they are dropping, you are now looking. You see five naira in the transparent side of the basket. You are angry. Five naira, how much is generator? How much is this? If you, if you want to fund ministry by yourself and be responsible, oh no, 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 no. Get set to kill yourself. I'm too young. I plan to live very long. Forget this story about death, I told you. I have the, co I have the confidence to say it because I plan to live long. The mysteries of life that surround me are more than any devil, bomb blast, accident, etc. That's why I can talk about it. I scare death to his face and go to bed because death is a spirit. It's not one of those touch not no 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 come on ask it the sun will no more give me sunlight by day the moon will no more give me moonlight by night jehovah will be my everlasting light He'll be your glory, your strength and your sight. The light of the moon will be like the light of the sun. And the light of the sun will shine seven times as bright. When Yahweh finds up the wounds of this world, He heals all the bruises inflicted by this world. Hallelujah. Listen. God is the builder of the church and like every member in the body or the corporate body you can allow God to build your life because your own body not koinonia my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit so I allow him to build me into prosperity I allow him to build me into health I allow him to build me into increase I allow him by aligning to him every other thing is the work of grace my own is alignment through obedience are we together listen i'm speaking to someone tonight come on to me jesus says all ye that are labor and are heavy laden you are putting upon yourself self-inflicted frustrations there are pastors who before a service starts they will call the department how many people are there now say kite the way it is it's like 80, 81. I was 81. Today that is a convention. Depression for no reason. 
and I will build my church. Papa Oyedeko was sharing how that when they were dedicating Covenant University, the Lord asked him to lie down flat on the ground in front of the gate. Are we together now? Different men of God have their different skills of surrender. Papa Iya Deboe will kneel down. Once he just goes on stage, he will kneel down before everybody, which is, uh, what do you call that thing? Tambourine. Say, look, don't be carried away that I'm among the world's hundred most influential people. I can sing and dance before God. Other people roll on the ground before God. All that they are doing is saying, Lord, let the people see that it is the finger of God, not the brain of a man. Your brain is too small to run ministry. Ministry pressure will blow it into pieces. Hand it over to the all-wise God. Listen, every time you see supernatural things in the church, don't fight it. It is the finger of God. Because most times, the reason why we doubt the fact that it is God is, we look at the individuals that God is using. The protocol people are here and they will tell you, most times when we travel for ministration, most people, did you know that over 70% of the people who have been blessed through this ministry have never seen me? They don't even know how I look. And I love it, you cannot imagine. We are dropping from the airport and then we come out and then they are looking. They greet Victor, how are you? They greet Mike and then they look at Yerima. Oh, Yerima is quiet. He looks like he's the one. And then I'm there with polos and my earphone and I'm just moving. And then I say, how are you? And I can see the disappointment. We labor to borrow jeep. We labor to do all of these things, to carry this thing. But there is this treasure in earthen vessels. Listen, when you know this, no matter how high any result you see is, you will not be afraid of it. Because you can see where the man's limitations stop. You know from here, it's no longer Joshua Selman. This is the hand of God. Jesus said, if I by the finger of God cast out these demons, the kingdom has come to you. Same thing with honor. We're talking with, um, while the protocol person was driving me, Eddie was driving me coming. We're discussing with him in the car. And then I was telling him, I said, can you imagine how, uh, what was I even talking about? I was talking about honor. How people crave for honor in the body of Christ. Once somebody is entering, when I was coming, I saw the media people chasing me with camera, just snapping. And I said, this, these are the things that kill men of God. You snap your way into death. Unnecessary honor. Let me tell you something. I have found out by experience that honor is a mantle. If God has not given you, there is nothing that will bring it to your life. What someone did that brought honor, you would do it and they would trivialize it. But when that grace comes, no matter what you do, and Jabez was more honorable. Which service did he conduct? It was an anointing. Hallelujah. And I will build my church. I learned this principle of absolute surrender long ago in my life. And it's one of the foundational things. That's why when men of God stand and they are bragging, I this and that, my shoe is 50,000, this suit came from this. And I say, Lord, I know how the suit came. It came through favor. Favor. I'm unashamed of the favor of God. Oh, you were smart. Fine. You qualified after 20 years of ministry to be sitting in this position. I was carried on the wings of grace. I know how I got there. And so I don't become foolish. He is the builder. And so I give him all the glory. I will not say, Lord, you are the builder. Then when it's time for shine, I say, God, this is my moment. Just allow me to serve it. To you be all the glory. The reason why we don't give God glory in church is because we do not recognize that he is the builder. The leaders know. Everybody knows. I tell you. That anybody climbs this pulpit one day to brag and make noise as though it's his strength. I, I, I don't know what will happen to that person. Maybe thunder will just strike on his head and drop him dead there. Koinonia is a mystery held only by the hand of God. Only by the hand of God and not the wisdom of a man. 
he said rabbi we know that thou art a man sent from god he said no man for no man can do these things except god be with him is god with you and are you allowing him to build your life are we together say after me god is building the church that's why let me say something except for very very um, for few exemptions the idea of people running away from their church because they feel it's not hot enough is not correctly kingdom because God is building his church as lukewarm as that church is one day the fire of God will fall on one quiet youth who is around one at the back of one toilet praying for three hours every day he will just pray and go back and say Lord this boredom in this church I am taking the burden every day he's just praying in tongues three hours one day he will have an encounter that's what happened to apostle babalola right quietly he went to tap uh, um i don't know if it was palm wine or something I, I can't remember the story now and the fire of god fell upon him he saw a whirlwind like that of moses and a voice spoke from it he had an encounter and then they were already a group of prophets who refused to endorse him in the ministry and one day they were watching him from the window during a prayer session and the guy healed a madman in their presence and the Lord told them this guy is one of the people to carry that apostolic grace that was the only condition that they received him and extended a hand of fellowship for him brothers and sisters please let God build your life all this bragging I'm beautiful that's why it's working you will see the limitation of beauty when it is only beauty building your life I'm rich that's why I, I, I got first class that's why remember last was it last month or month before last when we prayed for a first class student here who was jobless how do you explain that please make up your mind for the body of Christ and for yourself that from today you will never be embarrassed to directly acknowledge God in all your ways I'm sharing with you a principle that will bless you in all your ways acknowledge him right proverbs chapter 3 when you read from verse 5 to 6 to 7 really that's verse 6 in all your ways acknowledge him and there is a promise he will direct make straight your path my ministry my business my intelligence many guys are around me even them they know that i'm fine continue instead of you to use the opportunity and say lord thank you there are many ladies nobody will even say good morning to see let me tell you men can deceive you but when you deceive yourself you are really in deception everybody here we know where god brought us from everybody knows i know where god brought me from so i'm not going to allow all of the blessings from ministry get me carried away some of us will not acknowledge it by ourselves but if others try to do it in a way you know is destructive you will enjoy it it's like saying i won't buy beer with my own money but if sam buys for me i won't mind you are still a drunkard because a drunkard is not the one who buys beer by himself is the one who drinks it whether it was given as a gift or bought with your money an arrogant person right a boastful person the one that will face destruction from god is the one who always looks for an opportunity for vain glory i'm not saying don't honor people don't acknowledge people i know you love me you respect me you honor me i love you and i honor you too however there is a limit and it is the responsibility of everybody to draw the line there are things people do for me i say no no this is too much and i will build my church if you allow me build it the gates of hell will not prevail say amen. amen number three is god blessing us please pray in one minute before we continue and say lord build my life i've been trying to do this thing in my own strength please pray trying to enter a relationship by your own strength you tried makeup it didn't work you tried with one it didn't work you tried buying designers it didn't work because it doesn't work by all those things it takes the mercy of god open your mouth and pray i've tried it by my strength i've tried succeeding 
has stretched my intellect from border to border tonight i give it up i give it up please pray in all your ways acknowledge him lord if you do not help me nobody can help me if you don't take me from where i am to the place of destiny there is no possibility outside of you can you pray in all your ways acknowledge him hallelujah please listen let it be a culture in your life every time men begin to clap become an usher point them to jesus hallelujah and i if i be lifted up from the earth i will draw all men you never see me say i did this the power of my might i did this do you know every time we finish koinonia when i go back home many times after counseling people i just i have one small chair it's my little altar with god i just get down on my knees sometimes when i come especially during the miracle service mighty things that god has done you know that's how i can just sometimes i can i can stay in that position and that's how i pass the night just acknowledging him i don't cry before people but i cry before god i just sit down and i see his faithfulness when we had 25,000 likes on Facebook, exactly 25,000, I was on my knees before God and I said, Lord, I know people with TV ministries whose Facebook page is not even up to 3,000. It's the faithfulness of God. I said, Lord, to be able to influence people, I hear that already, this is just like the second service. There are over 1,000 plus people following us on Facebook already. I mean, on um, our online radio right now connected listening to me from around the world during my birthday last year there were about 16 nations 16 nations called to say happy birthday i've not gone to those almost all of those nations maybe but the faithfulness of god if you learn to acknowledge god some of you if god gives you half of the anointing he has given me your knee will never touch the ground again because of arrogance the knees that used to touch the ground this was how i used to cry in his presence in the night on concrete floor people are sleeping and i'm crying and say god please if you ever will need to use a man i'm available then i could not afford suit now that i can afford it that suit must rub the ground except it's not my own if it tears let it tear be lifted high be lifted high for your glory be lifted high be lifted high be lifted high for your glory be lifted high in my life be lifted high be lifted high for your glory of your money you you that's the day you will know you don't fear god because prosperity gives you options can you stand and look at 100 million 1 billion and hold it and say lord this will not take my place in your place in my life oh god bless me for where you began to love god the day one guy said i love you by yourself you have not prayed since that day till today no need for prayer again the day someone said ah you are pretty 
the day they said lead one small prayer and two people fell under the anointing god never saw you again ah. this is how people cheat themselves out of the realm of the spirit they cheat themselves out of the place of power i tell you this is why the body of christ may never come into unity because of this spirit of pride i did this i built the church i did this it was by my wisdom i prophesied and it happened i spoke to her and she came with triplets the bible says a man can have nothing except it be given to him by the father this was the secret of david david knew the hand of god he would say many are they that rise up against me many are they that say where is his god he said but thou O lord you are a shield for me that i have not fallen is not a product of my strength oh i'm this i don't like ladies keep quiet and give god all the praise i'm anointed i finished three days dry come and see what god did in the meeting who told you who told you he does these things that men may fear him let me tell you something i show you a secret that will make god foul to keep lifting you men may talk they, their talk will be, their saliva will dry from their mouth but you will just be rising by a mystery no human can explain be lifted high be lifted high higher and higher lord be lifted high be lifted high This is already a message to somebody this may be the missing key behind your glory that just faded from last year you found out that it was like Ichabod there are people like that I watch preachers on TV and without a sense of cynicism I see the fading of the glory people are still celebrating but those who are in the spirit know there is nothing new in this grace it's dry money is still coming but it's dried. I tell you I've had ministers that I respect so much. I've had ministers that I acknowledge the dealings of God in their life. Speak in recent times and I was shocked. How can a man touch a level of spiritual reality and not have anything else to tell the body? There are people who have been etched out of the program of God because of this pride. There are musicians who have left the scene of Nigerian gospel music never to come back again. Because right now if you don't give them 1.5, they will not come. You have to talk to multiple PAs. They've forgotten that it was one song they didn't even write. It came that day, they didn't eat. And they were praying. And God said, let me bless you. And he brought one song that opened them up. And from that day, have you noticed that most of these people, any other song they write, no matter what they do, it will never sell again. Because it was never about the song. It was about the grace. There are some of us here, please hear me, I'm speaking to you. I know pastors who anything they did used to work no matter how small it was like a charm they can organize a program in 24 hours but right now whether you put balloon whether you fly around the plane nothing happens because it came out the glory has departed I tell you something the sin of pride is worse is worse than the sin of drunkenness and all of these other things when God will lift a man and you now stand and forget the God of your salvation I spoke to a, a man of God one day I used to know that man very interesting then God had not done anything much in his life but I spoke to him recently and his arrogance oozed out like an odor I could literally smell it with my physical nose 
I was talking to you on the phone. There are pastors who until you now have a seat, they forgot how God took them. You want to see Joshua Selman stand here with your 50,000 or your 100,000. Not that God led you to honor. Not that they challenged you in church to sow. They now stand. As you are dropping it in the basket, then you see the man of God. Ah, quarter for me to do that. May God take my life. For what? Be lifted high. Be lifted high. For your glory be lifted high. Be lifted high. Be lifted high. For your glory be lifted high. Hallelujah. Please sit down. We have to hurry up. I already sense the presence of God. Let's hurry up. Number three. The third thing that we need to understand. Listen. For the body of Christ to attain the unity of faith. Is to separate between doctrines and personal dealings with the spirit. Please listen. What I'm telling you tonight is very deep. Pay attention. There is a difference. Listen. Between your personal path of spiritual progress as earmarked by God on the strength of what he's making you become. Are we together now? We all start our journey into the things of the spirit together. But as we proceed, the election of grace diverges men into different trajectories in the spirit. Are we together now? And so if both of us start together and you are called into the prophetic ministry, I'm called into the apostolic ministry. You are called into business. Somewhere along the line, there will be a divergence. The same way students start course, science, whether engineering, medicine, you do the same thing. Are we together? As you progress, what happens? You now begin to move to different programs that are custom built to produce that thought, that knowledge in you. Now, the trouble is this. Most people, especially preachers have not been able to draw the line between their personal dealings with god and some of the ordinances and the covenants that they are compelled to make to strengthen their personal work with god so that they can be effective in dispensing the dimension of god committed to them they they do not draw that line and everything their personal dealing in the spirit they ship it to the altar and teach it as a doctrine are we together now listen paul said all things are lawful but not all things are expedient are we together now did you know that god can come my dear god can look at this lady and in his personal dealing with her because she's on her way to become the wife of a man of god and a man of influence are we together now God can tell her my personal dealing with you. You are not going to wear trousers. Are we together now? That is not about wrong or right. You are occupying a position where you will be a mother to many. And I need you to be as modest as possible. So that you can give the clearest picture of a virtuous woman. That is a personalized dealing. But by the time you now ship your personal experience. And use it as a template to define virtue. You bring error in the body of Christ. Are we together now? There are personal things God can give a man. Are we together now? Stringent rules that God has given people. It has nothing to do with old and new covenant. It is your personal work with God. God can be so meticulous as to define for you the kind of clothes to wear. Because of an assignment. God can be so meticulous to define to you the kind of, the number of children to have. God can say because of the enormity of this assignment, you cannot have more than two children. If you like, have eight. But at my recommendation for efficiency is two. It's left for you to sacrifice your personal ambition of wanting ten children. To say, Lord, for your glory. If you are lonely after two, you buy a puppy. But anything outside that, you position yourself. Are we together? God can say, because of where I'm lifting you, you cannot have 
three cars at any given point people who sold 20 cars find the best three and give the rest out and people they don't know these are ordinances that control power in the spirit it's not something there are things that god has given me like personal rules it's in the bible samson was given a code they said samson the secret of your anointing is tied to your hair you are a nazarene separate unto god let no razor touch your head you can shave but not bad and delilah came he tried to do every kind of thing and she went to his hair bob the hair and bob the glory away from his life until he died are we together now listen most when i see the way many ministers are careless i'm surprised because you see increase in ministry can make you forget the precepts and the ordinances of god that were given to you there are agreements that i had with god i've done all kinds of crazy things there was a time the lord gave me an instruction i put hundred like one one thousand like hundred thousand on the ground and the lord said i should pray as i'm matching it that's how i kept matching it i was praying in tongues for hours declaring that finances will never have dominion over me will i tell you to do it it is a personalized dealing are we together now please listen this is giving us maturity separate between the ordinances of god given to you in the secret place for the purpose of efficiency and doctrines that are established by the integrity of the world they may not be wrong but God gave you that because of the capacity he has also given you. Somebody like Papa Adeboe, his covenant with God was that every time somebody before like you worship God, Papa he would go down Adeboe on his knees. His Are we together now? Whether in London, before like Obama, God, before anybody, Adeboe he would do this. Are we together now? Are we together now? Whether in London, there are people because of their covenant with God they will never own more than two personal houses they will make many rich but they themselves are limited for many years many years I wanted to buy a car God stopped me I don't know how many times there are times I've smiled thinking I just went to God oh God I like this no way will I stop you from buying a car if you want to follow my own path for you God didn't direct you and it <laughs> What is your dealing with God? There is no man of the secret place who will not eventually have personalized dealings with God where unique ordinances will be given to you from God. Hmm. It was William Branham that was given a sign by the Lord that every time his right hand begins to shake, the angel of the Lord that accompanies his ministry is in the place. And he will stand for hours and people are watching him and he says he's waiting for the arrival of the angel and people are angry which angel we've been here and then his hands begin to shake and he says the angel is here and you begin to see dramatic things you try it you don't know whether it's demonic or you see how spirits get into people because you now begin to see yours and say ah william branham whereas he's a spirit god is warning you the atmosphere of god's glory is causing a spirit to react instead of you to cry for help you are there rejoicing that you are growing listen it is costly and dangerous to take your personal spiritual precepts and bring it as a sign just like the example i shared did you know that there are ladies that god will give them rules no heavy makeup aside from powder and just something does it stop there he may not necessarily fight it but what he's saying because of what i am making you become can you sacrifice this for me? Are we together? Listen, if you love the Lord, there is nothing he will make as a demand from you that will be too much to give him. Hallelujah. It is lack of this separation between personal dealings i've done all kinds of crazy things with god but i cannot bring it as a doctrine i i stopped sharing my experiences the only 
experience that most people have had is my encounter with Jesus. There are many more, but I will not share it because these are personal dealings. And if you are not careful, when you begin to share it, it will make people to deviate from having confidence in the knowing the word to begin to search for encounters and when the devil sees your appetite for sight in the spirit is the exact raw material he needs to deceive you one day you will see something that will not be of god hallelujah so many altars today many constitutions of churches have the personal geos encounter as the rule for the church if geo does not eat salt because god suspected that he may have high blood pressure and god before that time you see that just a simple rule now he will now add it. if you eat salt in that church you are anti what god is doing that's wrong that's a personal dealing there are people read the bible because of certain kinds of anointings they were forced to be vegetarians so that they can host certain kinds of the anointing but you don't stop somebody from eating jesus for instance never ate meat he only ate fish cereals it's in the bible you never see a record where jesus ate meat who told paul kill and eat answer me who told when when remember those unclean animals pig everything when it came down ah peter said like jesus me too and Jesus said, ah, I had to do, you are not going to the cross. I know what I was doing. He said, kill and eat. He didn't say just kill and look at it, kill and eat. Listen, you can see two people, they will do the same thing. God will keep quiet over somebody. But for the other person, God will say, let's go back to the secret place. And you are saying, God, me again. Everybody is praying for one, one hour. God is letting them. You pray for four hours. God is saying you are not being serious. And you are like, God, what is this? Watch this. You don't compare your work with God with what is happening to the other person. There is a template a marked for you based on what God is doing in you and based on where God is taking you to. Separate doctrines. A good pastor will know how to teach people the truth void you may at times initiate your personal experiences to buttress on some point but the message cannot be hinged upon your personal experiences your personal experiences are too mysterious and haphazard it will take only you to understand them when you share it with people it will lead them into confusion there was a time in my life for instance where the lord asked me not to read my bible for one week you see that kind of strange thing Imagine teaching you now, you say, thank God, I always knew that this my not having appetite to read the Bible is not backsliding. I've been looking for an excuse. Even apostle, don't say that to us. I'm even saying it now, warning you. It was because God, I was in a season of my life where God was teaching me certain things. Are we together now? And God was teaching me that it is more profitable for me to receive the word than just to read it. And the Lord began to tell me that I am ever learning then but not coming to the knowledge of the truth i was obsessed with rema i would sit down with dick's bible and eat it cover to cover greek words check everything just look at it and i knew that something was wrong and the lord began to speak to me it's not just about dick's bible and strong's concordance do you believe the little i have given you because faithfulness is the key to increase not just careless knowledge and the lord began to teach me that there are pastors that i'm allowing them to clean along certain paradigms in the spirit but this is unnecessary for your kind of ministry so you must stay with me to teach you the diet combination that will produce that apostolic grace in your life and so because of that it was an experiment for seven days but i cannot share that experience and use it as a doctrine hallelujah is god blessing you how many people have we confused as pastors with our personal experience because the man of god wants two children like i said anybody that has three four you are eyeing the person in your church five you are looking with anger six you are looking with rebellion why put people under pressure just because there are certain people because of their call they may not marry i hope you know oh yes 
men and women alike because of the nature at least we saw it in the apostle paul because of the nature and the demands i always imagine if paul had a wife he would have been as good as not marrying because the number of times she will see him in her lifetime is countable prison today ephesus today diana will influence somebody to go and throw, you know all kinds of things so god knows why he just said look paul i know i will compensate you when you come to heaven but for now forget about the issue of women and pay attention So if you are not married, does that mean you pressure people and every time somebody says, I want to get married, you there are people like that. Any area that is not a major area of dealing in the spirit, they don't pay attention to people when they are having those issues. They don't deal with them in that area. Personalized dealings. God can give you dealings, food, clothes, the way to communicate certain things to do and not do it's not just the cause of the law it is his unique dealing for you because he has studied your vulnerability and your strength and he has seen that it's only in this kind of atmosphere like a buffer he creates for you so that you are safe and if you walk within the jurisdiction of his description i'm telling you you will never fall praise the lord let's take the last point and then we we'll pray is God blessing us today? Romans chapter 12 from verse 3. We'll read the A part and establish the last point and then we'll pray. Thank you, Jesus. Romans 12 verse 3. Shabbat For I say through the grace given to me to every man listen that is among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think right but to think soberly according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith listen the Bible says there is a way a man can have a perception of himself that is correct but there is a way a man a church can have a perception of himself herself to a point that the bible calls it more highly that means you have crossed the boundary the acceptable level the last point this one has troubled me personally the inability closely related to the point i just shared the inability to separate between thus saith the Lord and our human opinions. Please write it down. The inability for ministries, pastors to separate between thus saith the Lord, a prophetic word coming from God and the sincere opinion of a man, a combination of his exposure, his intelligence. Please look up. There are many churches today that even if the man of God coughs, people say, yes, Lord. Because the man has created an atmosphere. I'm not laughing. Listen, please. We are, we are going to pray now. There are men of God who have created a picture of ministry that everything that comes from them is of God. Are we together? We do not know that the Holy Spirit is not a fool. There are many times Paul will speak and say, I speak as a man. This is my opinion. My frank intellectual analysis on this issue. Because you see, we, we have transferred this inferiority that came from the continent of Africa into our lives. And we feel that the only way to respect us is when um, we give people an idea that everything that comes out of the man of the, the words of the man of God came directly from God. What has this led in the body? People refusing to marry because a man could not separate his opinion. I can look at a lady, come, Mama. I can look at Mama now. 
are we together and see a very beautiful lady and say ah mama this lady is a nice lady oh if you have been praying i think this is this lady is worth praying about that's a human opinion he's saying amen <laughs> i'm busy using him as an example and you are saying amen <laughs> hallelujah oh yes ah he knows what he's here in koinonia to receive are we together now so i am listen listen i'm telling him sincerely oh look at this lady we have all watched her in koinonia she loves god she's a serious lady she's serious if god is sending you to a ministry this is the kind of person to be a pastor's wife not by any vision by intelligence and sight and logical conclusion based on the principles of the word of god you know a bad woman when you see you don't need a dream you see all the attributes you know an irresponsible man when you see him you don't need any angel to appear and say this guy is not an he's not he doesn't like the things of god you are unequally yoked what you love is what he hates the more you are growing the more he's angry with your spiritual growth is that a good man what prayer do you need about it you pack your load and leave god gave us wisdom he said wisdom is profitable to direct so back to my example i can now tell mama but if because of my arrogance i now say mama that's your wife wife that's that's your that's your husband are we together now let me tell you what i've done to both of them i have tied them in an unholy i have put a stronghold upon their minds are we together now whereas this guy may be looking at another lady his heart is somewhere he has even started the process laying the foundation and all of this and now i'm coming to scatter the whole building because of a supposed vision another thing is seeing somebody and tell him i'm looking at you and i um Go and start trailer business. This guy is saying, God is sending me to oil and gas. He said, trailer. And because he respects me, this guy for 10 years is trying to buy one truck. Are we together now? Listen, men of God have destroyed the hopes, the dreams, the lives of people. If you need money in your church and a man says i want to build i've gathered six million and you want to say so don't say god is demanding your isaac i'm telling you now my polite proposal is better than an armed robber's gun think about it that's not prophecy that's a threat you are threatening the man to withdraw his six million and deposit it otherwise armed robbers will come and truly if armed robbers come one day you say ah this man is a man of God. No, he's not a man of God. That's not the reason why armed robbers came. Listen. Every pastor and man of God here, listen. We owe God accountability. You know, years ago, I didn't used to know the, if, the effect of my words on people. I used to think when I just speak to people carelessly, it won't mean anything to them. But as I kept growing in leadership, I got to learn that the words of a leader is like the words of a father. It makes impact. You can look at a lady right now and say, I'm proud of you. Just that little step to you is no big deal. But that would be the basis of her seriousness in the spirit. Ah, ah. Joshua Selman said he's proud of me. Ah, out of everybody in Koinonia. Because to you is no big deal because you are used to being celebrated. To someone who has never received a comment from somebody. The same way you look at somebody and say you're a bad girl you were joking and the lady is crying for one week oh god i repent wrong words we have not separated thus said the lord from our sincere human opinion there are times people have met me over issues and i've told them honestly god has not told me anything about this issue however let's look at it from the bible okay this is what you are doing no the bible prohibits this try this take it this way and then sometimes in the midst of it god will speak expressly and i'll say this is the word of the lord to you and when i think what i said was of god if i later discover that at my level of growth or for whatever reason i didn't hear well i will not have the embarrassment to say sorry i think we should pray about this thing again that day i thought it was god that said you should buy a bicycle but right now i found out that god has no business with you buying any bicycle let's pray 
do you have the courage brothers and sisters to separate between the word of god spoken to you to people or to yourself and your sincere human opinion please sit down the body of christ has been destroyed because of this a man makes a mistake simply acknowledge it was a mistake he said are you joking even my mistakes are pro no 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 that dimension now is not of god once you get to that point it's insecurity spiritualized hallelujah because you see in africa we have a lot of respect for the words of men of god and please listen pastors heads of departments and maybe all the people in our community online don't be under pressure to speak to people if god has not said anything it does not mean you are not anointed hallelujah so we have all kinds of people confused right now how many people have made mistakes in their marriage because it was a man of god that said so you must marry so 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 and so person now he married the lady and he doesn't know what to do with her and they are all angry and they are confused and the man of god is there i know men of god who have looked at people and say relocate you shouldn't be doing anything in nigeria and sincerely he just perceived in his spirit that this guy should be abroad he now said go to kenya the guy is living like a a fugitive in kenya whereas he was living with authority he sold his house sold everything and left could it be that there are people seated here right now and is the supposed word from a man of god that has kept you limited you wanted to do business and the man said you don't have any any business doing any business right and now you've sat down because you thought that oh my own is just ministry that is coming and you are getting poor you are getting broke the day you went to go and meet uh, maybe the lady's parents for introduction they say what are you doing you say according to what my pastor told me he said i should not worry it would be like the twinkling of an eye and the father looks at you and he say you have the courage to come and enter my gate the next time you come i will call police and they will catch you and you go back disappointed oh god did you not speak to me i refuse to be a fool i refuse to let the pursuit of god look like stupidity whenever there is no direct word from the lord i work with the principles of the word how many men of god were doing well in ministry until a prophet or an apostle somewhere in a meeting prophesied to them i know pastors who have no business having churches they are not supposed to open churches but they went and met a man of god now the man may not be wrong but he spoke a word he said i'm looking at you and i see 17 branches god is giving you speed the guy started dying the money that god allocated for the program he now started spreading 17 branches around and now he's killing him weekly budget 2.5 whereas his annual money that he's receiving from the small members is 500 000. where is he going to get the other money from so he starts lying he starts creating a prophecy session drop your thirty thousand. i speak to you that's what has led men of god into all of these things because of pressure separate between the word of the lord directly see and a sincere communication of the truths of the kingdom there are times i prepare a message not that god told me necessarily i sat down as a leader I understand how to build people I know that if you have a ministry with people you must build them in the area of spiritual growth build them in character build them in finances family life leadership interpersonal skills these are things that are we, we are human beings God does not need to tell me that the wisdom of the world has taught me that you must build people holistically there are times I come on stage here and God completely from everything I've planned that does not mean he did not give the inspiration but at this current time this is what he wants to be said and i'm unashamed i drop it there are times i come here and i tell you this is what the lord spoke to me this word came from god this is what he wants us to do it is not unspiritual to acknowledge your humanity listen to my message why revivals die 
the humanity of men. People have sent me names. Dio, uh, Shegun, who and who they say apostle. Who do you think among these three guys? I said, no, 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 no. God has not told me anything. I don't even want to start deceiving you. But there are some of us here, especially some of us who are just starting in ministry. You are under pressure. When you get that kind of text, you just laugh and do tinini tanana and then it just lands on Dio and you send back, say, Dio, I hear Dio. And now the lady, and maybe Dio is not even born again. You now pin this lady with this, this unspiritual brother for many years and she cannot move forward. I deliver anyone here who has been under the influence of a wrong prophetic word that has tied you down and has refused you from moving forward in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. A man of God who is limited in scope sees somebody who wants to do international business and he says, no, this is not of God. He's using his limitation about his poor understanding on financial intelligence and destroying the passion of another person to expand. You don't do that. And then the worst part is when we start saying it's from God. So right now, brothers, let me just buttress on this point. But brothers cannot come and meet a lady. You can't come and meet a sincere lady and just tell her, oh, you love God. You have to start saying, look, it was by 241, between 241 or 242. Uh, sorry, I was dragging you at me. Around 241 or 242, I was just strolling around somewhere. And I saw what looked like a vision. I said, Lord, is this you? And he was silent. Now, the lady is standing and wondering, what's this guy saying now? Of course, she knows where you are going to. And he says, look, on a very good day, me, I'm just minding my business, but how can I be negligent of this heavenly call now that I've seen this call? And now the lady wants to say no, but she has been threatened by what? A vision. God said, you are my wife. I'm not saying... Go and think about it. What is the answer? The lady said, well, it's too early. I don't know you. Is this what you are saying? Me too. Do I know the vision? I, I saw it. I, ah. As funny as what I'm saying is, this is the template. The only way many brothers in many churches know how to ask a lady. They just come and say, what did, are you still wasting my time? Or I plan to marry based on what God told me. He showed me July. Are you doing this thing or not? Let's just know. And it keeps backfiring again and again and again. Because you see, the laws of the spirit are unemotional. This again is also the reason why people are confused. And let me just touch on this and then we'll pray. Today, you go to bed and you see Amaka. Bless you, darling. Tomorrow, as soon as you wake up, you see Shalhoma. You are washing your face and you saw her face. I say I reject it. You saw it again. Are we together now? Next week, you now see Martha. And then the individual, is she sincere? Yes. Is she sincere? Yes. But because you have tied your, your paradigm, are we together now? To only visions, you are confused. You saw seven sisters in one week. You are not a bad brother, but you are seriously confused. You can see me come matter. You can see me wearing suit and matter dressed like this. It can mean intimacy, not marriage. You have to go back to God to find out what he's saying. That you saw what looked like suits does not mean it's marriage. A ring can be a symbol of authority, not a vow to say I do. You see, you, 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 you come down and then be careful some of these books, please. Um, um, it's my job and my duty to address these things. Although that's really not what I'm talking about. But since it has come, let's just let it land. There are books many of us have read. Written by sincere people who have been confused. That's why a man can be married. And now be looking at a lady. And then another prophet will come and say, Well, I don't know how to tell you this thing, but... This lady you have married, although you are 10 years in marriage, she's the reason why your ministry is not moving forward. I stand as a prophet of God to declare to you, is there a lady called Jane in Koinonia? Yes, yes, ma'am. 
I said, leave your wife, go to jail. Now, the man will not leave her in one day. But automatically, he was not eating her food again. And then he now calls Jane, 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 how now? How was service today? Jane will say, fine, daddy. He said, why must you call me daddy? <laughs> it, has, it has started. I will talk. Oh, my name is Joshua Selman. <laughs> And the wife is surprised. He's prayed. He has suddenly developed an unusual passion for prayer in the night. And you go to the parlor and you see he's, he's secretly calling. Jane, what does it take to do your wedding sharp sharp? And he's planning on leaving his wife. Because somebody said, thus saith the Lord. And in the church we are so unspiritual that anybody just stands. And because he tells you something that is true. Then he now uses it to confuse you. Please listen to me. Anyone here who has left his financial pursuit because a man of God spoke to you and said you don't need it, go back and carry those notebooks and start reading it. Otherwise, you would you would chew your hands in the future to come. The Bible says a lazy man will not eat. It has nothing to do with, with vision. Are we together now? If you graduate and you want to become a millionaire from you've nothing is coming in your hands now get a job and start from there do you need a vision there are two ways god directs men he can say start and he can say stop so if he doesn't say anything start i need to address this thus say the lord has destroyed a lot of people so we have gotten into all kinds of things Thank you, my dear. I went to pray for a woman some years ago. God is my witness. I saw over 21 anointing oils. And these 21 anointing oils was from different men of God and different prophets. 21. None of them was free. By the way, not one was free. She went to one woman, one prophetess. I was told that if you go to the woman's place, now I'm not criticizing. Maybe the woman is listening to the message hallelujah and then the woman said you have to camp in her hostel you must buy her water you must eat only from her restaurant who does not know that's business skill no 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 don't threaten me with spirituality who does not know if i have a ministry wouldn't i want you to eat from my restaurant it's a very sincere desire to generate revenue don't spiritualize it and make it look like if you eat my rice there's there's the way that rice this is is it not uncle Ben's or whatever they brought it they, they cook that rice you spiritualize it and threaten people there are members who cannot go and buy food in certain places because some men of god have supposedly put an embargo Haba. you want to take your children to a good school but the man of god has said if it's not my school except you are not under this ministry and you are threatened i set you free I deliver you from that nonsense this night in the name of Jesus Christ. One of the benefits of spiritual growth is freedom. Marry me or you die. You say, oh, no problem. I'm already dead. You don't threaten me. I marry because of love, not force. If you are in a hurry, go and find somebody and go and meet the parents. We give this terrible idea about God and it is the prophetic and apostolic ministry that has brought this bad idea about God. Everything that a man wants, he uses prophecy to make it happen. The Lord is speaking to me right now. Everybody, package 10, 10,000. Come and drop it. Rub my shoes with it. It's a sign of speed. The speed I've experienced in two years of ministry. Carry that seed. Mr. Man, you need money. No problem. God designed a system to honor you. Don't tell lies and threaten the people. For when God speaks, there is grace for performance. There are many angry people. You see them remove the envelope and they are just walking to the man of God with anger. They get there and they just kneel down and just drop the tear and say, pray for me. There are many members are angry and I foresee a revolt if we don't change. Because as TV ministry is exposing people right now, a day will come koinonia is going on air and more people will share these truths and when it happens people will say pastor my money because 
all that long story you have been threatening me I will say it without any fear or favor I'm a man of God there is a way I can come to you right now and tell you I am hungry please give me food and you will bless me but when I come and say the Lord instructs even when God commanded Elijah he didn't go to one and say God has said it did you hear bring food he said madam bring food for me thus saith the Lord people have mortgaged their vehicles they carried their jeeps and gave a man of God because he said God said bring it God is not an idiot now don't get me wrong there are times that those kinds of instructions will come I can't tell you how many times God has made a demand of my resources demand of any and everything however anything that is not done by love brothers and sisters is sin don't let any man threaten you to marry him in the name of prophecy don't let any man threaten you the worst one is becoming part of a church because of prophecy so like all these guys now serving the lord the day now they are ready to go and start their ministries or do something the man of god now stands and says if any of you leaves this assembly except i'm not a man of god there is a curse upon you nonsense there's no such thing as that except if they believe it they'll go and die as a result of lack of carelessness and preparation not because of insecurity expressed in a threat are we together now there are so many pastors they can't marry they can't get a job they can't move because they are serving a self-centered man of god who is enjoying their ministry and will never allow them to move the moment they want to move you say the course remember and they now stay back i deliver you tonight in the name of the lord jesus christ Any man deceive you. listen our god is a good god our god is not a wicked god who comes out to just kill people and destroy their lives men kill themselves because of their violation of kingdom principles we're going to pray Ephesians chapter 4 says it is for this reason he gave unto some when you read from verse 12 apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors teachers he says for the edification the maturing of the saints that's what is happening to you I'm not teaching you this listen please look up to be judgmental an imbalance because some of you in your various churches whether here or at home you have men of God that do some of these things the goal is not to go back with the spirit of arrogance and rebellion but the goal is to have a settled confidence immovable and unshakable to separate between thus saith the Lord and anything that is a lie hallelujah but I know whom I have believed he says and i am persuaded that he is able so number one i spoke about the fact that god is always in the church i'm doing a review everyone say god is always in the church yes regardless of the imperfections god is always in the church when you go to church look for god don't look for doctrines when you go to church look for God don't look for dress code when you go to church look for God not a man's ability to speak good English or otherwise not a man's ability to gather degrees and then you use that to mean oh this guy knows what he's saying no when you go to church don't go around looking for mundane things go to church looking for the one who is in the middle of the lampstands bypass the mistakes bypass the arrogance bypass the flesh and find God if you search for him you will find him in every church because he's there for the sake of two or three who are gathered in his name the rest may be gathered in another name but 
when two or three are gathered in his name what did he say will happen he said there i am not by proxy in their midst number two god is the builder of the church and by extension the builder of your life always know that number three separate between your personalized dealings with god and the doctrines that god commits unto you your personal dealings with god may require you following some strict pathways that are for your personal consumption and not for the church not for members generally separate it feed the people with the truth as committed to you unto them and separate between your personal dealings and what God is telling them number four separate between thus saith the Lord and your human opinions your human opinion can be spiritual and it can also be equivalent to the Word of God but have the unashamedness to admit before people especially those who honor you and esteem you to be so anointed have the meekness to tell them this is my perspective on this issue and when God speaks have the unreserved boldness to say this was from God if I perish let me perish please rise up on your feet hallelujah we are going to pray I'd like you to please participate in the prayer I thought I'll have time to round off with Psalm 133 a mystery God showed me about the blessing released when the corporate body comes but our time is up but I think we've had enough listen to me Jesus said look up everybody and ye shall know the truth he says and the truth shall make you free he says therefore if the son of man set you free you are free indeed many of us have been saved but we are not free because of these things and we are in our way contributing to destroying the body of Christ with these points that I've shared pride claiming everything that is done is from you or criticizing ministries you call a ministry and say this ministry they are not anointed they don't even have rema there's no revelation in this ministry there are books God wants you to read and you feel I've left this man far Papa Ia Deboe comes for a crusade and you cannot attend because you think my level of revelation is far exceeding this thing this man is going to be teaching us as if we are in nursery school when you search for God you will find him in every church take my word for it when you search for God the God that I serve he's not just in your church he's not just in koinonia when you search for him you will find him he was found in prisons he was found in different places in the Bible I choose to seek God not the perfection of men I choose to seek God not the dexterity of ministries I choose to seek God when I go for a, min a meeting I ignore the mistakes of the man of God I ignore the limitations I see his disalignments here and there but I sustain a spirit of maturity did you know brothers and sisters and I say this with all humility we are praying I've had the privilege to be called by different people and they have spoken to me about men of God and their limitations I think I was sharing with you was it some weeks ago one of them was one very great man of God and you know some people called me to say certain things that I cannot even begin to say here and they were true they were not a lie so when they said all these things to me had started seeing these signs personally but then when it, it it personally broke me the lady had to do it in secrecy because this is I mean if you count the men of God in this country maybe the first ten you will be among them 
repeatedly. But I told them something. I said, listen, I'm not justifying the things the man of God is doing. But I can tell you authoritatively, he's still a man of God. Whether you choose to disbelieve him or not, I will build my church. If he refuses to align in the secret place and amend for those imperfections, he has God alone to face. But as far as the building of the church is concerned, Christ alone must be glorified. Do not let the imperfections of churches and men of God stop you from seeing God and receiving. There are men of God who are very arrogant, but I listen to them passionately because my focus is not their arrogance. They should finish their boasting and then let me hear what God has to say. And I know they carry something that I need. So I ignore all of those things. There are men of God who are very careless. I ignore their carelessness. And I pay attention. There are men of God who are very vulnerable. When you look at them, you don't know what they can do. But I ignore those things. And I pay attention. There are men of God who you know are standing very fine between the bridge of witchcraft and ministry. I ignore all of those things. I have had a passion to find God. That's why I find him everywhere. It doesn't matter where I look. I find him. You stopped seeking for him and started seeking for perfection. In a man of God, in koinonia, in your ministry. You, search, you stopped searching for him and you started seeking for perfection in every book. You started seeking for which Greek word is correct or wrong. And it stops blessing you. Oh, oh, oh. say Lord help me that everywhere I go in the body of Christ let me search for Jesus not perfection lift your voice and pray a seeker of Jesus not perfection a seeker of Jesus man may be imperfect man may not have the excellence you are looking for they may not have the organization you are looking for but can you find Jesus in your church? Can you find Jesus in your pastor? Can you find Jesus in the church in Zaria? Can you find Jesus in the church in the north? Can you find Jesus in the church in Nigeria? Yes, I know there are manipulations. Yes, I know there are wrong prophecies. I know that there are manifestations here and there of witchcraft. I know there are people whose God is their belly. But can you find Jesus in the church? Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I take away that attitude of cynicism. I take away that attitude of resentment. I take away that attitude of self-centeredness. I search for Jesus in every church I search for Jesus in the Catholic Church I search for Jesus in MFM in living faith in deeper life I search for Jesus hallelujah prayer point number two Lord I relinquish dependence on the flesh and all the things that you have accomplished through me i lift my eyes from today on you alone and i will never lean on my own understanding lift your voice and pray father i repent for making men look at me instead of you i repent for drawing the attention of men to myself instead of you 
Are we praying? Pray. Lord, I've not used my beauty to direct men to the king. I've not used my prosperity to direct men to the king. I have a passion for being celebrated to a default, to a point where I don't care if my king is exalted or not. Lift your voice and pray. Let pride die in my life. Let fame glory die in my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We'll combine the third and fourth point and pray together. We're going to pray and say, Lord, I pray that all those who believe in your word upon my mouth will not be misled by my inability to separate between what you are saying and what I'm suggesting to them. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, in any way I've confused people, bring direction to them. Are we praying in Koinonia? Lord, I pray for the millions that submit to the grace of God upon my life and believe in the word of God upon my mouth. May I never mislead them as a result of my ego. Oh, may I not say God is saying when you are not speaking. May I have the humility to separate between my personal suggestions and the word of the Lord. I receive grace not to put men in bondage. I receive grace not to yoke men. I receive grace to separate my personal feelings from that which you want to tell the body. You move mountains, you cause walls to fall, and with your power, you perform miracles. There is nothing that's impossible, and we're standing here only because for you move mountains. Brothers, let me talk to you. Do you know right now? Please come. When you see a gentleman like this, do you know if this gentleman is successful, many elders will ask him, what are you doing? In other words, how come your life is this fast? Society has made people's growth rate so slow. If you buy a car at 45, they say, wow, wonderful. You are responsible. But you buy a car at 22 and see people say you're a witch. If they see a young man succeed, you see everybody saying, uh -uh, at this life, two plus two, it doesn't add up. God wants to accelerate the kingdom. The coming of Jesus is near. There is a lot we must do for the kingdom. Listen, you can't spend your life looking for money. It's a cost. It's a cost. It's a cost to spend your life looking for what to eat and what to drink. You will never serve God that way. Pray eight hours. When you are hungry, you are joking. You may endure, but your children will not endure. Listen, hold on. Please, I want you to pay attention to what I'm telling you. You see me preaching from my heart. Otherwise, we'll keep playing games and at the end, many Christians will backslide, Pastor Jakes. They will leave God. How many believers do you know 
who are not standing again because the reality of life we said this thing many years people insulted us and said we we're noisemakers those people today some of them are not born again they are not even in christ again they've gotten into all kinds of things survival is a cause you should resolve that issue and spend your life serving god if you are a brother here when i say pray please pray pray the sisters can join but brothers you must pray you shouldn't stand and just be leave any man of god thing and cry listen there are some of you as you are listening to me right now there are seven siblings or six who are waiting for you to take care of them you have your own mother you have your own father and I, how are you going to live that's the cause of depression and then God calls you into ministry no job you want to marry you want to move forward you, you must be a joker you must access another mystery brothers and sisters you must trust God for a quantum leap tonight there is a grace there is a grace the name is a grace there is an unction that helps men and expedites their process in life the climate is too harsh for an average young man the probability for establishment is is almost like passing through the eye of a needle the factors are too many and we're standing here only because you and we're standing here only because you you made a way, made a way. When our backs were against the wall, and it looked as if it was over, you made a way. hallelujah there are people here listen home and abroad their entire families are earning 200,000 but every week they are doing physiotherapy and chemotherapy for someone I heard of a woman 70,000 naira every week God is my witness they spend on is it physiotherapy or chemotherapy or something like that and there is no guarantee the person you see how the devil works until all your money finishes then the person will now die peacefully and leave you with trouble how many of you right now nobody to help you in your life lift your voice in one minute and cry cry for the help of god Koinonia, pray, pray. Shabakato sebara walaraba. Zakata paroko to sepreketi. Shekete pereko sopra na walaraba na walaraba. Don't know how, but you did it. Lord, I cry. Hear me, O oh God. My life must make progress. My life must make progress. Outside, are you praying? My life must make progress. My life must make progress. hallelujah 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 prayer point number two listen listen i want us to break out of cycles tonight are we together i'm going to minister to you but there are people here you are seeing the patterns of your families reproducing themselves in your life nobody rises beyond the level go to school or not it's a pattern you must break don't watch it happen and say it's all right nothing solves itself by itself you must engage it with faith lord this poverty thing 
I've seen it in my family. We are not lazy people, but I'm seeing it come. This lack of being serious with God. Lift your voice and break every cycle. Lift your voice and command. Exempt yourself. Exempt yourself. Exempt yourself. Are you praying? Hallelujah. Listen. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen to me. Listen. Listen. There are people you see who never last in marriage three years no matter what happens maximum three years one nonsense must happen and scatter the marriage are we together there are some of you listen the mysteries that destroy your family is men keep cheating you whether in business whether anytime there is wickedness you are the only one it happens to it's not a coincidence when they want to scam someone you are the first they find when accident is about to happen is when you are crossing the road the car will hit your leg i'd like you to pray and say no more i insist i've been keeping quiet about this but tonight i place a demand lift your voice no more no more no more it shall come to pass in that day that the burden shall be taken from off your shoulder the yoke from off your neck and it shall be destroyed because of the anointing Take it, take it, take it, take it. Leka paroto sopra para na basha. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Two more prayer points before I begin to minister to us. Listen. Hallelujah. Jesus said, Satan cometh to me and does not find anything of himself. If Satan finds what belongs to him in you, he's authorized to destroy you. We are going to pray. And we are going to say, Lord, whatever legal access the devil has over my life and destiny, I apply the blood. I invoke the mystery of the blood. Lift your voice and pray. Legal access. I apply the blood. Are you praying? I apply the blood that speaketh better things than the blood of Abel. I apply the blood. I apply the blood. I apply the blood. I apply the blood on my children. I apply the blood. Pray on my husband, on my wife, on my business, on my ministry, on my job. I apply the blood. No divination, no witchcraft, no enchantment arising against my life shall prevail. Hallelujah. Please keep standing. Keep standing, everyone. We are going to pray now. I tell you, I'm angry in my spirit. Luke 18. Verse 1, please, quickly. Luke 18, verse 1. And he spake a parable. Luke 18, verse 1. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Verse 2. There's something I'm looking for. Saying, there was in a city a judge, which feared not God, neither regarded man verse 3 and there was a widow in that city and she came to him saying avenge me of my adversary stop there 
God is a God of vengeance. Listen, listen. I know that's the nasty side of God. But the God I serve is not only merciful. God, is, there are people who don't need mercy. They need vengeance. You don't pray if you don't believe it. But let me tell you something. There is a God of vengeance. He said, let God arise. And let all his enemies be scattered. Lift your voice and cry. Lord, avenge I cry for your vengeance over the works of darkness in my life, my family. Koinonia, pray. Arise, Sokoto Pakaya. Righteousness and justice are the foundations of his throne. Oh God of vengeance, arise. Oh God of vengeance, arise against the wicked. Oh God of vengeance, arise. Oh God of vengeance, arise against evil doers. Arise against them that seek to feed on the flesh of your people. hallelujah listen there was a man in the book of Esther called Haman have you heard about Haman that man was conspiring to destroy the agenda of God not just the Jews the agenda of God the apple of his eyes and then the Bible says through a lot of activities when that plot was gotten the king sent and he said they should go and hang him he already built a gallow in advance in advance we live in a wicked world brothers and sisters let me tell you it's not all about vengeance but there is a dimension of it that is necessary if you must break through the wickedness of men is beyond imagination you are going to pray it again lord there are powers that have tied down my life and my family arise oh god of vengeance arise oh god of vengeance arise oh god of vengeance hallelujah hallelujah listen listen i was told the story of a woman pastor jakes married a man that god had blessed and then the man died as soon as the man died strangers came from left right and center and told her you have no inheritance in this they stripped that woman to the last of everything banished her and her children to go men they will smile at you and talk against you in the secret and hope for tragedy to come upon your life so that they will rejoice in your pain no, you rejoice in my pain the God of vengeance will arise for you I tell you only a wicked man will see someone in pain and rejoice over it he said rejoice not over me my enemies though I fall yet I will rise again how many of our parents were betrayed by their best friends they lost their job because of someone they knew was the person who signed the check sign them off Say destroy them the bible says a man's enemies listen 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 koinonia i know many of us are young people but let me tell you when you become a leader or when you become one who is in any position of responsibility you will appreciate this prayer there are men who will kill you and bury you smiling they will kill you and bury you smiling when judas came to kiss jesus a kiss is a sign of love correct yet a man used that sign of love as a symbol to an enemy this is the guy this is how you will kill him how many people kissed you into your suffering today they kissed you with a stupid advice and that's that's what has landed your life today they told you stop tightening. these men of god are crooks they have destroyed your life 
are we together tonight i want us to engage the word to engage the word with your spirit if you insist brothers and sisters god will give you a breakthrough if you insist god will give you a breakthrough are we together now i want you to pray one last prayer and then i'll begin to minister by the spirit lord visit the root cause of my challenges i may not know what it is i only know the effect oh god go to the root it says every tree the axe is placed at the root every tree my father has not planted lord go to the root cause of the barrenness in my life the root cause as to why finances cannot stay in my hands the root cause are you praying hallelujah hallelujah listen if after tonight's meeting you return with a testimony nobody will ask you to run to the house of god you will go by yourself do you know how many why many people never see god the truth is they are tired of lack of results they are tired of it jumping around doing all kinds of things yes you don't love god just for results but you've heard me say it again at a point in your christian experience results must come as consolations to your serving god visit us tonight in the mighty name of jesus visit us tonight in the mighty name of jesus visit us tonight in the mighty name of jesus visit us tonight let me make an altar call let's start with the altar call first so that we'll finish right now please everyone standing no moving around outside your attention there are people right here everything we boast of is in christ if you are not in christ there is no guarantee please listen very carefully if you are not in christ there is no guarantee whatsoever are we together now so you are here we are talking about witchcraft you have joined us to pray congratulations but nothing will happen to you until there is a translation because when a man is not in christ the bible says he's in the kingdom of darkness the very domain of darkness are we together now so when that prayer of salvation is offered in faith there is a spiritual transfer it is only on that basis you can challenge darkness there are two categories of people very quickly i'm going to make the altar call quickly when you come pastor jakes will lead you in prayer and then we'll take over and fly tonight and trust god to take us to a realm where we will never return never return to this level in the name of jesus you are here and you are saying man of god is as if you are just prophesying to me you are right it's you i'm speaking to and i'm going to make an altar call one maybe two three minutes wherever you are outside i know there are lots of people you are saying man of god can god forgive me yes he can can god give me a new beginning absolutely no one has made it in my family you will be the first if and only you receive him he says as many as believed in him even to them that i mean as many as received him even to them that believed in him he gave them power to become power to become you do not have the power but you have the will and you can choose right now i'm going to make an altar call whether you are giving your heart to jesus for the first time or you want to rededicate your life man of god i gave my life to christ but somehow things have gone haywire no problem you are welcome if you are outside run like there's fire on the mountain any of the overflows you are inside here you run out i will count one to five very quickly one run like there's fire on the mountain if you are thinking about it go back to your seat Give Jesus praise. Please clear the way for them. 
there are people running outside let Jesus Christ step into your destiny koinonia can you motivate them appreciate them as they come don't let any friend tell you why you disgracing yourself shame the devil over your life tonight God bless you keep coming man of God you don't know what I've done just make that step of faith and come quickly run to Jesus run to Jesus keep coming keep coming there are still more people there are still more people if you came with a friend and he's trying to stop you leave him alone and come run to Jesus Every one of us in front, can you just lift up your hands? Lifting up your hands is a sign of surrender. Are you following? Please just lift up your hands and pray this prayer sincerely from your heart. Jesus loves you. I want you to understand that. Just say, Dear Lord Jesus. Say it out loud. I want to hear you speak. Say, Dear Lord Jesus. I come before you. I ask for forgiveness for my sins. I believe in the power of your blood. I believe in the power of your salvation. Forgive me of for all my sins. Thank you for new life. Thank you for newness in Christ Jesus. From today, I'm a child of God. I'm born again. My spirit is new. My heart is new before God. In the name of Jesus. Still lift up your hands while I quickly pray for you. Father, thank you for these precious ones. Thank you for the power of your blood. My Father, I ask even as your hands are lifted up, let your love, Lord, descend upon them. I ask that, Lord, the love of God will permit, the love of Christ will be shed abroad in their hearts by the Holy Ghost. Thank you for their lives, God. Thank you for writing their names in the Lamb's Book of Life. We give you praise. Thank you for the Holy Spirit that indwells them now. Thank you for the Holy Spirit helping them to walk in your ways, Lord. We give you praise. We give you glory. Thank you for your glory upon them, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Hallelujah. Please just look at me. Just the moment you turn, just in between the aisle, just you'll see somebody waving behind you. Please just follow him. We'd like to get your name, okay? Your name and some of your contact to get to pray with you. Hallelujah. God bless you. Precious saints, can we celebrate Jesus for this? Can we put our hands together and celebrate Jesus? Celebrate them. Congratulations. Congratulations. God bless you. Please. Let's attend to them quickly so that they can come. We're about to pray now. Hallelujah. We're about to pray. Before we pray, let me talk to two people. There's one inside, one outside that God is visiting their family. There's a mighty anointing that will come on them. One sister, a sister or so, someone inside and someone in the overflow outside. The power of God is going to come on that person now. God is bringing a strange deliverance. I'm seeing a strange deliverance. Bring the person one inside, one outside. I just want to speak to them. Please quickly. We have a lot to do tonight and we want to conserve time. Lift your hands. I want to pray. Just bring the people. Father, end witchcraft now in her life. In the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and declare that the reign of darkness is over. Bring this lady for me. 
free now by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus Christ free I'm going to pray for you there will be a mighty deliverance right now listen what is deliverance deliverance is not crying and rolling on the floor deliverance is by the power of God separating you from the spirits and the influences that are responsible for the challenges in your life I'm going to pray for you hallelujah lift your hands thank you Jesus. wow I'm already seen in the spirit mighty especially today God is visiting visitors if you are here for the first time God is visiting visitors in a very strange way lift your hands don't say anything just lift your hands just keep your hands lifted please bring them just keep your hands lifted keep your hands lifted God is touching people it's a foolish instruction but it's what the Lord is telling me just keep your hands lifted like fire is coming on people inside and outside bring them out God is visiting visitors 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 doesn't mean other people are not being touched but particularly visitors Father, spare not your hand. Spare not your hand. Spare not your hand. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let me pray now. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I'm praying. There are men and women here right now under strange influences that has tied their lives, their destinies, in the name that is above all names whoever under the sound of my voice inside and outside if there is any spirit motivating the tragedies in your life as we shout that name jesus there will be an eruption of fire in this place and all of a sudden god will begin ministering to people are you ready now at the count of three one two they must go from their hiding place. They must depart from their hiding place. They must depart from their hiding place. At the sound of his voice, I command every spirit, I command every devil, strange spirits tying down the destinies of men. I command you right now. There is mighty deliverance happening in the overflows outside. Mighty deliverance happening in the overflows outside. The power of witchcraft being broken. Being broken. Being broken. God is addressing issues of oppression. Oppression. Shakataya. It must end now. It must come to an end now. It must come to an end now. Lift your hands. Hallelujah. I'm seeing a handwriting and I'm seeing setback and then slash delay. That's what God wants to deal with right now. God wants to deal with it. You don't need to know whether you belong to the category. The fire of God will locate you right now. Father, I pray by the power of the Holy Ghost, anyone under the sound of my voice, shakata bakata, under the yoke of setbacks, whether you are a visitor, whether you've been here for a long time, in the name of Jesus, I command that spirit to leave you now. I command that spirit to leave you now. The power of God is touching.
watching people. Delay, 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 delay. You are a strange spirit. I curse you by the God of heaven. Delay in destiny. Delay in achievement. I curse that spirit. I curse that spirit. I curse that spirit. Bring the mommy out. There's a mighty deliverance happening to her. Delay over your family. Broken, broken, broken. Broken by the spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is giving me a strange instruction. Please, sisters, lay your hands on your womb. Lay your hands on your stomach. Something remarkable is going to happen here right now. There is a kind of deliverance God is doing. I don't know what I'm even doing. But Lord, I pray right now. This is not for everybody. But I am seeing the Lord is instructing that they lay their hands. And I'm going to pray a prayer for you. You'll be surprised. Every stranger hiding in any sister's body that is responsible for the manipulation of their destinies in the name of Jesus by this prophetic instruction at the count of three release them now one two three release them now 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 Johnson Johnson I'm hearing a name Johnson 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 we are still praying please Johnson my God I tell you I see this fire falling on sisters I don't know what it is with ladies God is God is ministering a serious deliverance to ladies serious deliverance to ladies hallelujah hallelujah you are here in this place listen you never rise beyond a certain level it's not that you don't start please listen carefully i'm speaking by the spirit the moment is like there is a spiritual embargo you get to that height you must crash down wherever you are i'm prophesying now and i'm praying for you the power of god is looking for those people the power of god is looking for those people you rise to a level and fall you rise to a level and fall lord in the name of jesus inside and outside wherever you are i release that fire like a messenger to your life like a messenger to your life i cast that witchcraft now i cast that witchcraft now hallelujah the lord is showing me a vision my god hold on i'm seeing deliverance for children like little children the power of god is coming on small children in this place i'm seeing children being delivered some initiated into occultism 
some initiated into this let's just walk the way god is father in the name of jesus i speak to every little child in this place who is a victim of any satanic manipulation wherever they are don't be surprised if you see little children manifesting now wherever they are inside and outside i'm prophesying that the spirits symbols just the symbols please. right now wherever the children are i'm prophesying that the power of god will touch them touch them i set them free from activities of witchcraft occultism any kind of initiation if there is any little child here under any yoke of bondage i set them free now i set them free now hallelujah hallelujah my friend lift your hands that gentleman going tap him Hi. there is hardship in your family and the lord is asking me to cause it right now in the name of jesus i cause hardship let the anointing of the spirit come on you now i cause that spirit the spirit of hardship i curse you now i curse you now i curse you now in the name of jesus christ hallelujah listen if you are here and you have any blood disease just blood disease any kind any kind blood related issue lay your hand on your chest i want to pray for you right now blood related issue genotype whatever it is um, or any kind of thing maybe any sickness that is blood related please i want to pray for you right now the lord is giving me that instruction very quickly i want to pray for you i'm seeing a lady who is as God is about to change her genotype now. 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 A dramatic change of genotype from AS to SS. From AS to AA. By the Spirit. By the Spirit. By the Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please, if you come from a family where no one in your family is working, lift your hands. Nobody, no job, nobody. Just please, just do what I'm asking you to do. Let's save time. Just lift your hands. Nobody at all is working. No matter what happens, just lift your hands. I want to pray for you. Lift your hands. I want to pray for you, Jesus. 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 I'm, I'm looking at hands lifted and, and for some of the hands I'm seeing like a rope. This is not necessarily you. This is a representation of your family and I want to pray for you. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. Get ready for the power of God. Right now, wherever you are, even those who didn't lift their hands, I decree and declare that that yoke of joblessness comes under attack right now right now right now right now right now i release them i release them i release their jobs i release their jobs by the power of the holy ghost 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 we end joblessness here right now right now in the name of jesus hallelujah hallelujah the spirit of revelation is coming on 17 people one seven one seven one seven at the count of four this is the instruction god gives me unusual access to illumination lord where are they inside and outside one two three strange illumination four take it now take it now the spirit of revelation 
uncommon access to the secrets of the kingdom uncommon access 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 i release it in the spirit access 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 hallelujah please make sure you receive every word that is coming every word come god is going to use you come come and stand here lift your hands stand up in the name of jesus i don't know you huh but an anointing will come upon your life today and god is going to change your life like day and night receive that grace right now strange grace step into that dimension that dimension there are impartations going on now let's just receive the impartations impartations not healings not healings impartations impartations i release the gifts of the spirit right now right now i release the gifts of the spirit lord stir up the fountain stir up the waters stir up the waters i release the gifts of the spirit strange gifts strange gifts strange manifestations of power of power healing anointings healing anointings i activate healing anointings right now healing anointings step into it step into it outside inside step into it god is releasing mantles mantles of healing ancient mantles of healing ancient mantles grace for barrenness grace for barrenness grace for barrenness healing barren cases hallelujah hold on i'm still praying i'm still praying god wants to release the healing anointing let's just stay here with this healing thing god wants to release there are many more people i'm not seeing them receive it yet father you want to release this grace there is such a grace as the healing anointing i pray for you right now in the name of jesus i stretch my hands inside and outside like a tornado may the power of god come on you now everyone everyone everywhere men women take it take it take it fire upon your spirit hello humanity thy kingdom come I will be done. Elohim Adonai, thy kingdom come. I will be done. Elohim Adonai, I don't know how we are going to manage this now ushers there is a prophecy for you the lord says i should tell you from now as you hold people and as you shake them there will be a transference on every one usher i'm prophesying now that's why i say i don't know what we'll do ushers ushers receive that mantle receive that mantle a strange healing grace coming on our ushers supernatural supernatural the unction take it take it where you are let that fire come upon you upon ushers in a strange way upon ushers in a strange way the grace for the miraculous no longer will you just hold people no longer will you just welcome people as you clean the seats you release strange mantles. Hallelujah. We'll soon pray for the sick. But please, everyone, lift your hands. Lift your hands. I want to pray. I'm seeing people here. The anointing for business and entrepreneurship. Just keep your hands. That's why. Please keep your hands. I want to pray for you. 
Don't say I'm not called into a businessman. That's none of your business. Just listen to what I'm saying. I want to pray for you. Is a grace. Is a grace. I believe maybe in the course of the service, we'll call a Jimmy here to just prophesy that grace and release it truly, truly upon your life. Lift your hands. Brothers and sisters, there is a grace for the marketplace. You don't go there through desire. It's not that you are a, mon a money monger, you just go. But strange ideas, strange insight. Do you know, I'm seeing a number 4 and 1, 41. This will affect many people inside and outside. Whether you are a businessman or not, it's not what I'm asking you. That grace will locate you where you are. A grace for the marketplace. Lord, in the name of Jesus, inside and outside, all the overflows, online, anyone here who must step into that grace, whether you know anything about the marketplace or not, take that grace now. Take that grace now. I release it. Supernatural access. Access. Access to business strategies. Access to ideas. Take it right now. Receive it. Receive it. It's coming on people. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. It's coming on you. So that you will go and prosper. 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 There is a woman, one of our mothers. This grace that I'm talking about is coming on you now. Now. One of our mothers. One of our mothers is receiving that grace. God is releasing that grace. Whether you are inside or outside, whoever it is, I release that grace now. There is a woman I'm seeing in the spirit. You must take that grace now. You must take that grace now. Uncommon ability. Uncommon ability. Uncommon insight for the works of your hands to begin to produce fruit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Look at me. Please help them. How many of you are trusting God to restore something that has left your life? It can be anything. How many of you are trusting God? I want to release that grace now. And I want you to believe it. Some of you had destiny help us. But something happened and they left your life. Some of you had quality relationships. But it left your life. Some of you had finances, but it left your life. Some of you even had certain levels of graces. The Lord is asking me to prophesy restoration. Kai, this is going to land on people's head. I'm seeing this thing. There are physical gifts you used to see in your life. Not gifts of the spirit. Not just gifts of the spirit. Gifts. Gifts. Endowments. For some reason it disappeared. Some of you are actually worshippers, singers, but that grace left is coming back. It's coming back. I invoke the grace that he has put upon my life. I prophesy strange restoration. I call it by name and I command it back to your life. I call it by name. Everything you once were that you now are not I command you to become it now. I command you to become it now. I release that grace. I release that grace. Receive it. I release that grace. I release that grace. Hallelujah. Now listen. Listen. There are some of us, hear me. You have been doing certain things. But the anointing for what you are doing has not yet come on your life. This is a very serious prayer. I want to pray for you. You have been doing business with the brain of a money monger, but not the grace for the marketplace. You have been singing, 
only with the voice of a musician but not the spirit of david i want to release the anointing of your office the anointing that has to do with your function please i want you to believe what i'm praying hear me hear me hear me it's one thing david was anointed to step into his office are you anointed for what you are doing i know you are working you want promotion is there an unction you are working with or are you just working with certificate at the count of three i want you to shout jesus there will be distribution of graces it's like an alignment the anointing the oil of your call the oil of what you are doing is about to locate you father in the name of jesus i pray right now whoever is functioning without an anointing functioning without the oil i stand upon this ground and i prophesy at the count of three may the grace that will distinguish you come upon you get ready now one one two two three receive that grace now take it take it grace grace for your academics grace for the ministry grace Help me. The chains are gone. God help me back. Hey, hey, oh, this is Yanu. Oh, this Yanu. You're the God of awesome wonder. Your power, oh, say you have shown me so much mercy, much more than I deserve. Hallelujah! 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 Please, I'm seeing something happening here right now. There are people who are receiving grace for speed and they will start running physically. Hold them. Hold them so they don't injure people. I release the grace. You won't control yourself physically. Running, speed, physically. I release that grace now. Receive grace for speed. Receive grace for speed. Right now. Right now. I command you to run. Run in the spirit. Catch up. Catch up. Catch up by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. I release speed. I release speed. I release speed. Speed to your life. Speed to your destiny. Speed to your life. Speed to your destiny. Speed to your life. Speed to your destiny. Words you speak, the things around your arms. Run like Elijah. Run like Elijah. You took away the chains and that help me back. Help me back. Hey, holy. Mercy. Much more than I desire. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We are going to pray for the sick now. Listen. Please. Three things. Let me just give three instructions. Hold on please everyone. The worship team will continue right now. Now we are going to be very fast about this number one. Number two.
please if you have not written your prayer request or the ones of your loved ones please i permit you put on your phone and call them tell them to send it as a text message write it we are going to be praying here tonight and we are going to be asking the fire of god to fall on request don't assume if you have not written it no problem settle down think well and write you are here you are trusting god for healing i understand there are a few sick people that they brought around please we are going to do it this way if your case is very sensitive then you can bring them to the front here but those outside please just walk to the um well there are a lot more people outside really well for those who can come in let's see but for those who may not make it you can walk to the front and then down there i'm here pastor jakes is here um we'll just station ourselves one one and then the other people will just support so that we can do it very fast praise god thank god pastor jakes is here and jimmy is here hallelujah praise god hold on so outside you can just walk at your various projector stands and stand there for those who have come in just allow them don't stop them let them come in that does not mean everybody will stream in please are we together if you're standing just stand trust god if they don't ask you what is wrong with you don't worry they just lay hands on you praise the lord Ejimi, please you help us Ejimi will be outside here and pastor jakes will be down outside there praise the lord benga you go with pastor jakes you will help pastor jakes outside um pastor alpha you'll be outside just help them and then um who, who is around again is femi around okay so you can just come and help me here so let's do it that way very fast very very fast if there are more people there see promise is here michael is here so maybe you can add one okay promise just follow promise follow pastor jakes michael follow Ejimi. please let's do it very very fast while hold on please don't be distracted don't cut the flow we are going to be very fast at this and we'll pray and then i'll speak over your life many miracles are happening even whilst you are seated don't be distracted i expect you to be writing your request and be praying in the spirit hallelujah for those stationed at different points whether at the back any of the overflows i'd like you to believe god for a miracle right now believe god for a miracle you can see someone like our daddy he has come with his crutch believing god to walk you believe you walk sir you believe the lord will heal you so get ready to walk you see there are people stationed around we are going to pray this will be very very fast and then the lord will help us in the name of jesus christ hallelujah father thank you let me start with our daddy first how long have you been like this sir six months stroke who brought him who came with our daddy you came by yourself sir came by myself by yourself from where sir was station here you cannot walk i can move with you this walking stick which but of the legs has a problem this is the leg this is stroke yes can you lift it no i can't i can't hold on look at this sir look at me you believe in jesus i believe you believe in the power of I jesus believe. lord i introduce your kingdom to this man's life right now in the name of jesus christ huh the lord will begin to touch you your hands everything is already dead sir lift your leg lift your leg just do what i'm asking you to do lift your leg lift it lift your leg lift your leg start try to walk gently come come try to walk gently come give me the stick look at me look at your stick come come don't be afraid come lift your leg look at this look at what is happening to this man came with this stick look at this look at this Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Oh, 
doing a very remarkable miracle for him. Find him. Find a chair and just keep him. Let him sit down while the power of God touches him. Sir, you came here by yourself. Um, trust him. Okay, and the boy has gone. Okay, he's somewhere. In the name of Jesus Christ, the God you believe has begun this miracle. You will perfect it. Look for a stick for him there. Hold your stick by yourself and go. Don't put it on the ground. Hold it up. Walk by yourself and go. Give Jesus praise. Look at what God is Heal now in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is destroying witchcraft in your life in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Someone is still sick here. Someone is still sick here. I'm feeling the healing anointing pulling out for me. Someone is still sick here. No, 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 no. I'll pray for you. But I'm saying, I feel it within this vicinity from ministers roll down, choir. Someone is sick. Come, let me pray for you. You came out. Lift your hands. Jesus. Someone is sick. Someone has to be healed here now. Someone is sick here. I know when the anointing has released me to do something else. I still feel that someone is sick. Someone is sick. Someone is still sick. Lord, let that person be healed. This is a miracle service. This is a miracle service. This is a miracle service. Just this vicinity. I sense it's like, you know how someone is pulling your cloth. Jesus said, virtue has gone out of me. That's what I'm still feeling. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. There's a gentleman here. Your elder brother has a case. I may not be able to mention the case. This is a health-related case. But this is a challenge with married people. This has affected, it's one of the worst things that can happen to a man in marriage. And the Lord is bringing a miracle right now. Right now. Elder brother, supernatural miracle is coming to that person by the power of the Holy Spirit. You are holding her, but something is leaving her to you now you who is holding her something is leaving her to you there is there is virtue i see a transference of grace from a jimmy's wife to you you are doing your work as an usher but you have received something very strange and very powerful you see let me tell you something if if you do not you see hold on walking in the anointing is more than having it having the anointing is very different from being able to navigate the pathways of the anointing if not you will be anointed but you will not be able to dispense it fruitfully because you are just guessing it's like a man shooting anyhow you must have discernment many people think all it takes once you can speak and someone falls they say i am anointed what do you know about the anointing the anointing is more than releasing something mysterious to somebody it must accomplish something this you need more discernment than even the anointing the substance the ability to look at for instance like these people who have been touched now you are an anointed man of god you are finished praying you go to the next thing you see insensitivity in the spirit this is not guesswork if you are guessing you will not see the results like this it's not it's not guessing so please learn it i know that this is a place where we value the anointing and there are many of you you are waiting for me to prophesy release impartation after this now it's not it's not just about holding people ah hold this lady hold Mukhtar's wife an anointing is coming on her please hold her her and matter two of them there is i don't know what it is but i'm seeing i don't know why god is doing this thing Strange. Hallelujah. God, 
God is giving two of them strange favor. Strange favor. I see strange favor. Strange favor. America, God is giving you access. I'm seeing you like a crown coming on your head. And God is saying he's giving you strange access. Strange access. Strange access. Strange access. Strange access. Muas, God is giving strange favor. Strange favor. Strange favor. Hallelujah. I don't know what I'm saying, but this is a word for someone. And the Lord is saying, why make it next year when I have destined it to be this year? Why make it next year when I have destined it to be this year? This is the word of the Lord. Why make it next year? This is a word for many people when I've destined it to be this year. As I speak to you, the word is for you. The power of God will locate you. Why make it next year? When I have destined it to be this year. It's the year of triumph. It's the year of triumph. Why make it next year? Just allow me to do my stupidity. Why make it next year? When I have destined it to be this year. Why make it next year? When I have destined it to be this year. My God. Shaka hallelujah there is a lady here you have been disappointed with god right now you actually came help the ushers you came expecting that i would directly call your case and you 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 prayed this thing but now it looks like we're about to pray and i didn't call your case the power of god is coming on you now now as a sign that god had now wherever you are he's locating you now now i command that spirit to leave you i see you in the spirit go now in the name of the lord jesus christ i stretch my hands now and i command by the power of the Holy Ghost, let her go now. Peace to your spirit. Every devil carries his nonsense and lives with you. Right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Pastor Jake is still being outside. Okay, we can just do it. This is a, listen, there are two moments in every miracle service you should not miss. Ah, there is, I mean, God is just doing certain things. It's like something is really happening. Don't worry about what is happening. Impartations, God, see, let me tell you, right now, if the anointing comes on you, just know that it's the answer to your prayer. This is not a special once the anointing comes on you, just know that your prayer has been answered you understand this is what it doesn't mean if the anoint if you don't fall down it's not answered i'm not saying that but i'm saying this is how god is choosing to confirm to some people now as i'm talking that your prayer no matter how difficult it is no matter how difficult your prayer is hallelujah praise the lord now everyone Please stretch your hands here and pray in the Holy Ghost. Please, Pastor Jakes, come. What do you mean? Please. Okay, he's writing something. Just stretch your hands here and pray. And pray in the Holy Ghost. Stretch your hands and pray in the Holy Ghost from the depth of your heart. Stretch your hands. Shakatopakata. Leketeketekete. Stretch your hands here and pray in the Holy Ghost. No, Liva. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Stretch your hands. Pray in the Holy Ghost. 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 Prophesy in the Holy Ghost. Shake it to go to Toketa. Rakata kata makata. So poto so pekete tete. Miracles, oh God. 
testimonies oh God signs and wonders signs and wonders signs and wonders signs and wonders we prophesy it we prophesy it we prophesy it we prophesy it visit impossible situations I tell you God is moving I see a cloud I see a cloud over this prayer request that's what I see in the spirit God is moving upon it moving upon it moving upon it the spirit of God is moving over the prayer request visiting families releasing angels releasing angels visiting the request I'm seeing the cloud of God's presence visiting the prayer request Savior, he can move a mountain. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save. Mighty and everlasting Father, Master of the Universe, the God that answers by fire. We receive answers by fire in the name of Jesus. Angels of God, are you not ministry spirits sent forth to minister to the heirs of salvation? We receive angelic ministration and direct answers from heaven now in the name of Jesus. The heavens over these requests are open and answers come speedily in the name of Jesus. It has been decreed, it has been ratified. And it is done in the name of Jesus. Lord, we say thank you. Lord, we say thank you. We say thank you exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask, above all that we imagine, is done in the name of Jesus. We give you praise, Father. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. In Jesus' name we have decreed. Give Jesus praise. Give Jesus mighty praise. Hallelujah. Please, you may still come. Pastor Jake's come. I just feel like doing this is. I, I don't always do this, but I want to prophesy over your lives. And in the name of Jesus, they are my friends. But the Lord is telling me to speak over their lives. They are great men of God in power. But in the name of Jesus, the Lord is saying I should prophesy the next dimension. To prophesy a new level. And in the name of Jesus, I speak it. Step into a new dimension. A Jimmy, God is saying I should release grace for access. I command that grace. Strange access. Strange access. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Strange access. Gifted men coming into your life connections with gifted men in the name of jesus and pastor jakes god is giving you influence strange influence strange influence strange influence strange influence is a very strange apostolic dimension of influence lord i pray in the name of jesus that you will bless them wherever your wives are i bring them into this experience now 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 wherever they are i prophesy to tosin wherever she is and i speak to hope you are one so i prophesy as it happens to you i bring your wives into this experience in the name of jesus
strange levels of access strange levels of access strange levels of influence hallelujah hallelujah let me do this just once i spotted lizzie somewhere one of the oldest year nine lady come she came in from abuja part of the founding people that started this ministry all the way and the lord is saying i should prophesy a release i told you about ladies who used to climb trees when this ministry started no money no nothing they were in welfare they were in worship team at the same time they would climb trees and pluck the firewood for cooking for us for the crusades and the lord is saying i should pray and prophesy and open up a new dimension that it is for her does not mean you cannot receive it you see the thing with prophecy is the moment there is hunger it will still land on your head praise the lord father in the name of jesus i lay my hands right now over lizzie and lord jesus i prophesy i prophesy according to the word that you are giving me i open up a new chapter a new chapter a new chapter shabaka toto barekete zat kaskapas katapas katapas Legate to soto prendeke skopari adabalaba. A new chapter, a new chapter, a new chapter, a new chapter. And as many who desire to drink of this grace, a new chapter, a new chapter, a new chapter. As many who desire to drink of this grace, a new chapter. In the name of Jesus, a new chapter. Listen. I prophesy to you a new chapter by the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Please lift your hands. We're rounding up. Who is this girl? Come. You. God has chosen to visit you. Come. Come and stand here. God is wiping your tears. This prayer I'm praying for you will open the tulip gates of your destiny. I lay my hands upon you and I command the gates to be opened now. I stood there and I saw you and the Lord said I should open that gate. I lay my hands upon you. I command the gates to be opened. Be opened right now. Be opened right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Be opened right now. We're rounding up. We're rounding up. Please, this lady with uh, yellow, blue, you come. I don't know you, but the Lord is asking me to pray for you. Lift your hands. This is a real prayer to usher you into a strange realm of blessings. I lay my hands and I remove the embargo from your destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command... Uh -uh. I'm praying for you, but I'm seeing my hand on you. I'm praying for you, but I'm seeing my hand on you. Jesus, please visit them. Strange visitations. In the name of Jesus Christ. Strange visitations. Lift your hands, please. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ah. I just saw a door open and I saw a name come out. Listen, I saw a name come out and I saw the Okalo family. The Okalo family. This is Okalo family. Okalo family. Okalo family. Okalo family. God is visiting you. All three of you, step into that grace. I open that door now. The Okalo family. Step into that grace. Open, 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 open. I open that door. An age long witchcraft broken over your family. An age long witchcraft broken over your family. An age long witchcraft broken over your family. I prophesy to you in the name of Jesus a dramatic restoration of everything that by the power of witchcraft has tied you down whatever has covered your glory i speak it right now 
in the name of Jesus let it be open 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 I unveil your glory I unveil your glory I unveil your glory Shaka -ta -ta -ta. I unveil your glory I unveil your glory Tonight is a strange night Please receive every prophetic word That I'm going to pray for you Ah Just allow me to do one more thing The spirit of God I have not seen this in a while I'm now seeing the map of Nigeria And I see Benway State the spirit of God is going to Benway right now. Right now. Touching people. You know how it happens when I speak. Benway. Benway. Miracles. Locate them now. Oh God. People from Benway. Benway. Strange grace. Strange grace. I break witchcraft. Benway. I'm seeing Benway. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. I'm seeing, I know Otuko, but I'm seeing the O, A. A at the, is there a place like that? Otuba or something. The power of God, I'm seeing that. Going to that area. The Lord is bringing a miracle. Ends with an A. Whoever comes from that region, in the name of Jesus, breakthrough, breakthrough, breakthrough. Strange breakthrough. Strange breakthrough. Benway. 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 I don't know why God is doing this, but I'm prophesying it. May the angel of the Lord's presence step into that place. Hallelujah. I'm seeing another name on the map. Emo. 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 Where are they, oh God? Emo. 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 Emo state. Emo state. The anointing of the spirit locates them now strangely matato sotota emo state miracles miracles breakthroughs signs wonders miracles miracles to emo state by the spirit of the living god hallelujah If you're from Cross River, Cross River, Calabar, something is happening right now. Cross River, Cross River, Cross River, Cross River, help her, help her, please. Hallelujah. Please lift your hands, everyone. The Ministry of Signs and Wonders. Let me talk to you, my dear. This lady looking at me. You come. The Lord has located you today. Come. Lift your hands. The Lord says, I should tell you for shame, He's bringing laughter to your life. For shame, He's bringing laughter to your life. For shame, He's bringing laughter to your life. For shame. He's bringing laughter to your life. Lift your hands. We are rounding up. You've heard me say it again that this is the most powerful part of the service. I want you to believe it. Hallelujah. By the grace of God, the anointing flows through me to you. And I know when the anointing is heaviest. It's only because many of us are already used to some of these things. And so you think when these things are happening... You don't judge the anointing just by physical manifestations. I want to pray for you. Please receive everything I pray for you. Every age-long challenge, every challenge that has refused to leave, I prophesy upon it right now. I command that it comes to an end in your life now. Now, now, that fair lady, come, this lady, Tyler, run, come, lift your hands, I'm still praying, in the name of Jesus, listen, whatever has brought shame 
and dishonor like a stigma to your life i roll it away right now in the name of jesus i roll it away right now in the name of jesus i roll it away right now in the name of jesus i roll it away right now in the name of jesus my dear look at me i saw you inside the cave and i'm surprised because we've paid for, for deliverance prayer and i saw you inside the cave you are just trying to push the door that's why i asked you to come out let me i don't know you do i know you where did you come from where where is that I don't know. Yes, I yes i'm going to pray for you god is bringing a major breakthrough two things god is going to throw somebody out of your life i'm not a prophet of doom but it will happen he will reach three days huh? throw completely so that you can move forward i hold your hands in the name of jesus every deceiver of your destiny will drive them far from you right now in the name of jesus christ you need to love jesus with all your heart right you are a nice person but your relationship with jesus you can, you can get teachings after this but i want to prophesy on your life god is taking somebody not death though just driving somebody out an unwanted person out of your life i prophesy the kind of favor you have never seen i lay my hands on you and i provoke the heavens to release that favor for you in the name of jesus christ I decree and declare over every family represented here whether your nuclear family your extended family hold on I don't know what has gone wrong but in the name of Jesus within now and miracle service match dramatic turn around for families dramatic turn around for families dramatic turn around for families in the name of jesus one of the mysteries responsible for open doors and new levels is the irrefutable ministry of destiny helpers i want to pray for you i don't know where they are but one thing i know is they never come on their own they are called by prophecy i prophesy to the north i prophesy to the south i prophesy to the east i prophesy to the west the helper of your destiny i command them to appear now i command them to appear now i command them to appear now i command them to appear now, appear now. hallelujah come come and hold my hands congratulations i'm seeing a job this is what i'm seeing i'm seeing a very good job and the Lord is saying, I should congratulate you. Look at me. You will stand here and testify before the people of God. All the Holy Ghost said I should tell you is congratulations. And I hold your hand. In the name of Jesus Christ, may it come to pass. I decree and declare. The results you have not had in 10 years put together. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. In one month, 30 days. I stand here under the unction of the Holy Ghost. 30 days beginning from today. Step into those results. Step into those results. Step into those results. Step into those results. Strange dimensions of results. Hallelujah. Whoever has despised you, whether to your knowing, or not to your knowing i pray may god put them on the scene as he lifts you may they watch your rising as god honors you i pray for anyone here whose spiritual life has gone down prayer life down your praise and worship life down fasting down word life down in the name of jesus christ i activate fresh grace receive it fresh grace fresh fire outside receive it fresh grace fresh fire fresh grace hallelujah wherever your prosperity is i pray may listen listen 
Hagar carried Ishmael and they were roaming around the desert. They said there was no water. But when an angel appeared, all of a sudden they saw water. That you have not seen it does not mean it's, there, it's not there. I open your eyes to see where God has anointed to bring you financial blessings. I open your eyes in the name of Jesus. I open your eyes to see where God has placed your prosperity. Hallelujah. The plague of death that is looming around this nation looking for people and families is listen it's like a graph it rises then sometimes it relaxes i'm praying whoever calls your name i'm prophesying this oh whether in the secret or the open to invoke death upon your life i command the earth to open and swallow them I command the earth to open and swallow them. Whoever prophesies that it will not be well with you, may misery follow them. The Esther anointing, the unction and the grace, that granted Esther uncommon access in the presence of Ahasuerus. Shababa Satalakata. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I release the Esther anointing upon your destiny right now. Take it. I release the Esther anointing upon your destiny. Hallelujah. Two more prayer points and we're done. Hallelujah listen listen many of us do not understand the mystery of spiritual defense and protection listen i want to pray something that is very powerful in your life listen when you are in trouble and there is nobody to show up for you it's a cause are you hearing what i'm saying now the bible says defend you in the day of trouble there are many of us if for any reason things go wrong in your life you are in trouble there is nobody that can arise as a defense but i'm prophesying to you right now in the name of jesus christ whoever must arise and defend your cause in the presence of your helpers and in the presence of your persecutors i call them forth right now in the name of Jesus may God raise men to be a wall of defense for you in this wicked um, wicked state that we are living right now in this country people say if you don't have anybody and honestly speaking somebody can get up and come and seize your land you and your land and your paper they will collect it because there is no defense I'm prophesying again quarter to shame May God raise a defense for you. And finally, I want to pray the prayer of Jabez for you. Many of us, ha, many of us have not studied. Honor is not money. Listen, listen. There are many rich people with no honor. Are we together? There are many well-to-do people with no honor. Do you know what honor is? Honor is when God anoints men to lavishly discern and celebrate what you represent without reservation. So for every one person who talks nonsense, there are thousands. Honor. Jabez said, Oda, the mother bore him in sorrow. You brought shame for me. So I call you Jabez. Honor is more than money, brothers and sisters. The Bible says a good name is better than riches. I pray the mantle of honor that by the grace of God has rested upon this ministry in the name that is above all names for as many who have the grace and the discernment to receive take that mantle right now take that mantle right now they don't have to know you but strangers will come to feed your flock receive that grace for honor hallelujah Wave your hands to Jesus and praise Him. Wave your hands to Jesus and praise Him.
Wave your hands to Jesus and praise him. Wave your hands. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you. We lift our hands to the great I am. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.